We have my Pinoy cousin today, Logan, aka Horse Meat. For six months, I was like posting on TikTok, and I finally got to 20k, and then I got banned. Bring me that ass. I did it again, and this time I got to like 98k. She grabbed my penis this far away, spit it with extreme accuracy, it, and I got banned again. So like I did the podcast now. Hopefully I didn't like embarrass myself. What's your, what's your worst heartbreak? I haven't talked about them before. She was just like, I don't like you anymore, and she shattered my heart. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Do you feel like you lashed out? And then her mom called me and was like, how dare you do this? And, well, I did a DEXA scan and yeah, dude, I lost like 23 pounds of solid muscle, muscle tissue. When you make your mom cry, it was really hard. The biggest I was, I feel like I was the least happy. If you could go back and change it, like, would you give him more of that time and attention? This is a deep ass question, dude. Don't take everything so seriously. What's up, homies? So I just wanted to start this podcast with a little disclaimer, cause horse meat, my boy, the Pinoy cuz, Logan himself, is well known and a TikTok star, a YouTube star, Instagram star for his uh, financial, political, fitness relationship, an assortment of various advice and tips. And in all honesty, actually really truly known for basically being a comedian. So there's going to be a lot of satire. Um, this won't be a very politically correct podcast. And um, I just... So I take it with a grain of salt. So hopefully we don't get canceled today. Oh, shit. This sounds sick, huh? This is crazy, dude. Right? What the Your fuck? voice sounds hella sexy right dude, now, Dude, dude. Oh, oh. Kind of giving me a hard on. Dude, holy shit. Relax. Dude, you too, bro. Who? I shouldn't have taken Cialis. <laughs> Fucking shit. Cialis in the... Damn, bro. This is crazy. Sometimes, I don't know. Something about me only wants to take Cialis with the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not gay, though. No, 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 never, never, never that. Um, Hairs look sick as fuck though. Huh? Makes me miss my hair before I started taking steroids. Dude, so what's the deal with that? Like, do it, do we start? Uh, what's yeah, fuck it, let's start. Okay, no. yeah, yeah. Is it, I don't know how it works, but uh, how? What's the deal with um? Does do you do you lose hair? Bring it a little closer to your face, blow. Okay. Um. Yeah, most people, most dudes lose hair for sure. It just accelerates your your um male pattern. Male pattern baldness just accelerates that. Oh, so damn. if you're predisposed to it, which I am because my dad is clearly balding, <laughs> and then I fucking start losing hair. So, and then the other thing is, I don't know if this is just, I don't know if this is just me, but like, I personally are, my hair is getting drier as I take it. Oh, I'm not so sure why. Is that like the oils? You, you mean like the oils in your hair kind of thing? Like yeah, it's just, just like it's just like dry. Yeah, like like oh. it's fucking more afro like sticking up like in the middle like the 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 left and the right sides look like super nice yeah like hella flow and shit and then in the middle it's just like <laughs> fucking like asian professor porcupine style fucking just, yeah just sticking up kind of thing yeah dude. yeah damn I know, it's just damn bro yeah that's why i see like I, I i can't commit to um doing roids mainly because uh i'm uh i'm being a pussy about it Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's a great you know reason. what I'm saying? Like, like, uh, like I can say it because, like, I mean, yeah, do I want my erections to be harder and I look fucking sick? Like, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, wait, it's wait, like, wait, your mean, erections would be harder? That's what I heard. With steroids? Yeah, I know. Uh, I, like, what? Yeah, my friends, Um, a lot of girls tell me, like, when, they're, when their boyfriends hopped on a cycle, she was like, yeah, like, he didn't love me at all, but, like, the sex was crazy. He didn't love me at <laughs> yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, like, the, the thing I heard was. Oh, um, well, like. I can get the sex being crazy because I, I get, you know, you feel a little more aggressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just do makes you, sense. With do you the think it's like, do you, go, do you go like hard? Is there like more like lasting? Is it like the endurance? Do you just go harder? Is it just like the aggressiveness of like the... In my opinion, it has nothing to do with your dick. In mm -hmm. fact, impotence can potentially be increased by taking on steroids, which basically means, you know, ED, erectile dysfunction. Yeah. So normally a lot of guys who take steroids like to take Cialis, like me. So, honestly, it fucking doesn't help there, mm. but uh, makes me like want to choke him a little more. Yeah, yeah, just go a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah well, it makes me just want to like slap it around a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, stick the, to some swings and. Shit. I was I was told um, by a girl she was like yeah it's, but it, but like it's like he didn't love me at all at anything <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's like the, the, but the love was gone. That's crazy. Yeah, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. She's like the yeah, slander I mean, song. Yeah, it's like damn, he's, like, he's going hard, but like. I just want to be loved. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that was just like, damn. Um, yeah. Was so. that guy on a trend or something? No, I think he did a, this is a, this is a close friend of mine. Um, uh, he did a, he, he just did a test cycle and then something, I'm not really familiar with what everything does. 
but he said he did uh like trt and something else so trt and something else uh, yeah i'm not really sure what that but i know i don't think it was like, like a heavy like cycle 800 milligrams of trt uh maybe i don't know i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. yeah I don't, I don't know what the the or t, is it trt or, or testosterone right? I was just making a joke because TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. Oh fuck, dude! So I'm like so uneducated. Taking like 150 ish on average. Oh, well, he was like he was like 18, 19, so I, I, she was probably just doing tests. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I could call him, dude. It's crazy though that like I mean I think um so I've been having this discussion with a lot of other people like some pretty like smart people in the industry too. Also had this discussion with James English last mm -hmm. podcast, but uh, you know below the age of 25. Essentially, a male is potentially developing his brain until the age of 25. So whenever you're younger than that, some people have noticed that people who take steroids under the age of 25 seem to be predisposed to more side effects, especially mentally. Hmm. So that could be something that like, you know, if he's 19, 20, then he could be going through. Which is why sometimes for some people, it's scary to start steroids a little too early. Yeah. And then also, um, uh, there is this kind of thing where like if you're going on trend for like the first time or like test for the first time and it's getting you extra, extra horny, you do tend to feel a little bit less committed. Oh, so you cheat more. I mean, not everybody cheats more. Yeah, but. But like, you know, you're a little bit more like got to go out and get them kind, yeah, of, kind yeah. of mentality, you know? Yeah, is it like, like for everything, you know, like it, work. Yeah, yeah. So that. Um, poon. Yeah. So does that, does that stem from like, is it like a thing where it's like the girl they're with is like, it's like, yeah, I'm trying to have like a lot of sex and you're just not, you're not able to like, you know, provide that. Or is it more like, I just want to like every, every girl I see kind of thing for the guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, normally I think you just, if it's done right, then you just get way more horny. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like also when you look at, you know, that means like if you're more horny, when you look at a female that you're normally <laughs> not as attracted to, I tend to be a little bit more attracted Ooh, to them. Damn that that sounds like a that sounds like a recipe for some disaster. You know. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it some does. like some bad times, some like uh, you know, one of those things where it's like you don't tell anybody kind of thing. From experience. <laughs> no, dude, dude, I uh, I watched that one um, more plates more dates video. It was like trend made me gay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like, and this guy was like, yeah, dude, I swear I was like straight as fuck. I swear, and, dude. Uh, and I like swear. I just got on trend, and suddenly, bro, I was gay as. You know, yeah, and um, I see. I don't know, like I don't know what the deal is with uh, that kind of like. I, is that real? Like, I, like I'll go on Reddit sometimes and see these like crazy yeah, I've stories seen it too. Yeah, especially the you know you know one. <laughs> should I be talking about this? I like. I will probably never go on the 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 slash the sush. Oh, the sush. I don't think I'll ever go on that shit, dude. dude uh, it's I'd a, probably end up just killing myself. It's a crazy place, dude. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Have you gone on it? Uh, dude, yeah. I'm, I'm like a, it's kind of, I, I like seeing those things where it's like, on my Instagram reels, all I see is like car accidents now. I, it's, it's, it's fucking crazy. It's like, I'll like open my phone, like I'm just on the toilet and like, it's just car accidents and shit. Wow. Yeah. And so I feel like the R sushi is like the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like watching a car accident where you're like, oh, this is fucked. But like, damn, like. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what it is. Real quick, guys. So while I was looking at the YouTube analytics, I actually saw that eighty-five percent of you guys that watch this channel are not subscribed. And I want to ask very little of you guys, but if you enjoy this podcast, if you find value in it, then please do me this one favor and subscribe to the channel because doing so helps me get bigger and greater guests like the guests you are listening to today. Also, this channel is not sponsored which means only the companies that I work with, which are Young LA and Huge Supplements, are the companies that can help fund this channel by you guys using the code Nile. So code Nile gives you a discount of 15% off of Young LA, and code Nile also gives you a, a discount of 10% off of Huge Supplements. And if you decide to purchase anything from any of these companies, it will help immensely for me by using my code. And this way, I can travel to other guests such as Dr. Mike Israel next week and also upgrade an equipment to make this podcast bigger and better for you guys. Um, what were we talking about before that? Uh, oh, trend made me trade. Oh, trend, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, honestly, I think, um, I think those guys are just gay. That's what I think too. I think they are gay to and begin they just with. Get <laughs> and then, yeah. Then the, it like brings it out. Yeah. Not that that's wrong. Yeah. Not definitely not wrong, no. but definitely gay for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, that's a that's a crazy thing. Trend, just so is it like different for everybody, kind of thing? 
it's definitely different for everybody. I haven't taken trend yet, but if I take trend, I highly believe that I will not turn gay. <laughs> yeah, 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 like 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 ninety five percent. Uh, ninety five. Yeah. Ninety five. Yeah. Maybe ninety four. Yeah, that's I'm, dude. I don't know. Like five percent is like a lot to chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's a that's a. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll avoid it. Uh. <laughs> But um, imagine just like doing your first prep for Olympia and you just take it and suddenly you just turn gay and like dude, your I relationship was, with your like spouse at the time and then fucked. You just, <laughs> just your prep is ruined. I used to always like think about these like fucked up pranks. Right. And um, like me and my friends would try and make a fucked up prank. And it's like if you could get like like gayness in a syringe, you know what I'm saying? Like because it was like that. Uh, and like you just go up to somebody and just you're gay now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be like. I don't know. That's that'd, crazy. That would be fucking crazy. That's um, crazy. You're just playing with God right there. Yeah, yeah, and and like like you're just you're like you're like a prank on your boy. Like he's just like sleeping, and you, oh, you're gay now. I thought about doing that with my friend Josh Manoia with steroids. Really, and just like giving like, it to him. I'm just like everybody wants to know, like, because he he claims natty, which I mostly believe, um, and nobody believes it. Yeah, because he just looks crazy. Wait, who disclaimer is though, saying? Josh Manoy. His okay. name is Joshua J. Blaze on Instagram. His arms are like bigger than Shizzy's. Holy to be shit. honest, like Shizzy and him just finally did an arm workout today, which I love because I was just like, "You guys aren't natty, but yeah, you are." Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but um, his arms are just crazy. And but like disclaimer, he's forty three percent West African, so I'm pretty sure that's a big thing. Oh that yeah, contributes yeah. There to you it. go. Yeah. But um, what was I saying? Yeah, sometimes I think everybody wants to know like if he's actually natty. Mm-hmm. But then if he took gear and decided to go for Olympia, he would be literally Phil Heath. Really, he would like totally become Phil Heath. Like you could just tell that, that's the kind of genetics he's got. See, that's insane. And he doesn't even to me, in my personal opinion, he doesn't really look like to me like I see zero. If he does take steroids, he is so lucky because I see zero side effects. Yeah, I see zero side effects. Now there's a lot of side effects that come that happen to your you know, your organs, your blood work, your mentals, everything. But from my perspective of hanging out with him a lot, I've seen absolutely nothing. Yeah. His waist is still tiny. Definitely doesn't look like he takes GH or anything. Clearly definitely, definitely doesn't look like he takes insulin. You could always take microdoses, but like how much is that going to really help you if you're taking microdoses? Do, do people microdose like steroids? Yeah, for sure. Really? What's the point of for that? Sure. I feel like if you're going to do it, it's like one of those things. It's like, if you're going to do it, just go all the way, you know? Yeah. But you know, I'm one of the people that like, for example, like it's scary mm-hmm. and like there's no all the way with steroids. Like it's still a drug. It's like if you're going to do Molly, you just do it all the way. Right. <laughs> or uh, not. Uh, you don't. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's my point. Yeah. It's like when you do any drugs, especially yeah. like, and I'm just using this as examples. I'm not. I feel like the whole podcast, I'm going to have to be putting up disclaimers because I got some serious viewers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By yeah, the yeah. way, there's a lot of satire today. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, uh, just not, not I'm condoning recreational drugs, but using them as an example, like you, you, everyone has their perfect dose mm-hmm. and sometimes you don't even want to like take that much. Like, you, yeah. like if you're prescribed Adderall and you take, you're like prescribed like 10 milligrams, you, you sometimes, you, I mean, you don't want to take 20. Yeah. You know, I feel like well, some like, people don't even need it. I think, I think, um, I think you're right. I think I, I was looking at it more as like with the microdosing versus so like, I, cause I, I feel like with steroids, um, like I don't know a lot, but I feel like there's, there's been different levels of like your cycle, but like, I feel like with microdosing, um, I don't know, actually, I don't even know what the I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, Technically yeah. microdosing is like, I'd say like if you're talking about milligrams, you'd be going into micrograms. Normally like for like acid, you'd be taking like a 10th okay. of like the normal dose you'd be taking is like microdose. But so, I mean, you probably wouldn't be actually microdosing gear, mm-hmm. but if you're doing everything relatively big ass open bodybuilders could be taking up to three grams that are on the Olympia stage. While as some people such as me before I was taking TRT with like 200 milligrams of Mastron. So I looked a little bit more dry. Okay. But I was on TRT because I needed to be on TRT already because I already like fucked up my balls uh, right? because so the whole story of how I got so, into competing. So, Oh, is yeah. Um, damn. So what, like your balls, I see. I feel like I, I somehow I fucking talk about this story like every podcast. If this is fucked up and I laughed, dude, I'm sorry. Like, no, it's not <laughs> fucked up at all. It's okay, not fucked up okay, at all. Okay. It's just, I talk about it so much. I don't want to like drown my viewers yeah. in the same story over and over again. But I always kind of have to retell you, it to someone. You mean like the Spark Notes? Yeah, I'll tell you real quick. Yeah. Spark Notes. Basically, I competed in like six to seven shows naturally. 
Um, I like was really depressed. I would wake up in the middle of the night crying because I dreamt that I got my pro card, but in real life I didn't. Um, and I would keep getting like 16th plus place, place at nationals. I'm mm -hmm. like, why am I doing so terribly? And you're I mean, natty. I, I was natural. Okay. Um, and then finally, like my, well, my coach the entire time was pushing me to take things that I'm like, no, I want to do it naturally. No, I want to do it naturally. And then he pushed some, um, estrogen blockers and like these pills on me. I didn't know what they were. He was just like, take this. It's not a steroid, but it'll dry you out. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm down. Um, yeah, that's low key fucked up. Uh, wait, did it work? Oh, wait. Well, it, it, it suppressed my estrogen, okay. which did make me drier. Oh, so but as advertised, as a natural, that's the dumbest thing you could possibly do. There's fucking no reason you should do that. Playing yeah. around with your hormones. Just there's so many bad things about it. Yeah. And you don't ever want to like suppress your estrogen, especially below reference range. It's so fucking unhealthy, not just temporarily, but super healthy, unhealthy in the long run. Mm -hmm. It'll fucking it'll fucking dry out your, your veins and make them fucking fall so, apart to pieces. Damn. And your bone marrow, your fucking bone mass will decrease and That's crazy shit. So does that like affect like your balls? And Well, I took that and then the next show, um, he gave me some more orals that I ended up taking. I thought they were more estrogen blockers or um, aromadex and whatever that he was giving me. Sorry, by estrogen blockers, I kind of meant AIs earlier. And then uh, turned out one of the pills was halotestin. That's a like the hardest core oral steroid that there is. So oh, and then I ended up winning my pro card on Winstrol and halotestin, which is two pills, two orals. Well, yeah, that's but also congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, that's really cool. I was super happy about it. But then uh, then <laughs> yeah. I was depressed for an entire year and I didn't know why. So oh, and, and it was then, because of the yeah damn. And then after that, I figured find it found out what happened. Tried the HCG, wasn't very successful. Decided to commit myself to TRT in my first injection. So this is almost like an accident, I guess, for you doing like. It was kind of an accident, but I was at the point where like my parents have had so many expectations for me and I just didn't want to go down that path and I quit being mm -hmm. an engineer for this and like being an IFBB pro was like my entire life. That's yeah. all my life was. So if I'm going to be honest, like if I didn't want it that bad, the accident would have happened. Yeah. So I just like, I just wanted it so bad. So yeah, it's, it's also my it's fault. Like, it's, I yeah, it's like, it's like 50, 50 kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you got it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But basically, but, yeah. I don't know. We we're talking about steroids, but yeah, yeah. yeah I feel you, like I'm gonna. You can, you can take low. You can take low doses and be a lot healthier in the long run versus yeah. taking. That's why. That's why I like try to explain to people like, there's people. There, there's a lot of comments out there, from some that like not everybody completely comprehends the subject. While some people understand the truth of some things, some people, right? There's like yeah, yeah. And so there's a lot of discussions out there where like people will claim that for steroids you should be taking, like. They like claim that Larry Wheels is lying about his cycle, or they claim oh, so that Eric like, Janicki is lying about his cycle because they're fucking huge and they're lying and they're saying small doses, but they really took huge doses. But like the next level of like being a fake natty, then that's what they believe. Yeah, but I believe Larry is telling the truth. Um, Eric didn't explain everything, but mm -hmm. he told me everything. And like he, like he also took GH and insulin, and it just everything made sense. But like, like um, people just think that. Like you need like maybe like Larry should actually be taking like two grams of shit mm -hmm. because he's so big, he's so strong. Yeah. Um, and what that's doing, in my opinion, is is promoting and pushing out a message to people to have people that don't understand it believe that you are supposed to be taking that much. So yeah. then people who start steroids, a lot of kids who don't do research like me, end up taking fucking like a gram of gear off the bat. And what's, what does that do? That fucking ruins their life. Yeah. So I'm like here, like the, calling this podcast, trying to call this podcast transparent mm -hmm. because I want me and all my guests to just talk about our stories so people can fully understand what it actually looks like and understand that th there's fucking repercussions to doing stupid ass shit. Dude, it's, it's funny you say that actually. And I, I just remembered a question that I thought of that I, I, I wanted to ask you when you like uh, texted me. Um, dude, cause you've been, you've been doing fitness social media for like a really, really long time. Like, uh, I remember watching you when I was young, you know, like not to no, you know, glaze your shit. Like, Please dude, glaze. do like skin off <laughs> you. But like, I remember like when I was, when I was young, like in uh when I was a lot more into fitness, um, dude, I wanted, I wanted the forearm fucking line tattoos. Oh yeah. I want, dude, I was like, dude, fuck. Like I need, and the, and the neck one, I was like, dude, I need that shit. 
and then I went to my gym and I saw three guys get it and fucked it up. Looks looks like shit. No. <laughs> no. Dude, it was so it was so bad. I was like, holy was fuck. And I and I almost like I almost like prayed. I was like, oh thank God. Like because like I like because they, theirs looked so bad. Like because it make you it works on you, you know? It looks tough. Thanks, but bro. like uh some people get it and it looks horrible. Um I don't know what the fuck was I saying? Anyway, it's uh, funny. I've noticed a lot of trends that have blown up since then. Sometimes now I feel like you know, you know when you do something just because you liked it off of anime or some shit, and then suddenly oh, yeah. a ton of people are doing it and it kind of pisses you off. Yeah. I'm trying not to be I'm trying to not to let my ego get the better of me with that, but dude, I've oh, noticed I, there's like trends that just Dude, I've made some of the worst decisions in my life based on anime. Like I remember man, dude, it was so stupid. I I re- like I, I watched Sword Art Online in middle school. Such a good anime and, though. Uh, I didn't dude, know it was gay, but I love it. Oh, is it is it gay? No, it's just so romantic. It's oh yeah, fucking that well, that was my thing. Was I like, I, I was like, I was like, uh, I really liked uh, Asuna. I was like, oh my god, that's like, that's what I want. You know, this is already a problem to begin with, dude. I'm like falling <laughs> for anime girls and shit. So I go to, so I'm like, right, I'm thinking to myself, I go to school, and I'm like looking around. I'm like, all right, who looks most like Asuna? Um, and I I picked out this girl, and uh, her name. Uh, I don't know. I won't say her name, but, uh, yeah, dude, uh, fast forward. Like I have a thing with her for like the next six years and it like fucked up my fucking like life, dude. It was horrible. All based on sort of online. No mine. way. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was. You it had was, a six year relationship? It wasn't a relationship. Well, dude, I was a kid, dude. So it was, but it was just like, it was just okay, some hold, shit, up, hold shit hold like that. Hold yeah. On. I want to hear the rest of the story, but real quick, by the way, guys, we are with horse meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have my Pinoy cousin today, Logan, a.k.a. Horse Meat, the YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram star who's working uh, fitness, depression, anxiety, financial, and relationship advice, and inspirational takes has swept the nation. Is that the is that the famous birthdays thing? No, that's my famous birthdays thing for you. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I do. I don't even know. Like, I wouldn't even say... Uh, yeah, I, I don't even think I've gotten banned like nine times. Like, I don't, think, I don't think a lot of people know like who I am and uh, stuff. So I'm just super excited to be here, man. I've never done a podcast before. That's pretty cool. Fuck. Wait, yeah. I thought you uh, didn't you like create your own at one point? Yeah, or dude. Oh yeah, it was horrible. So like, I didn't know how mics worked, mm-hmm. and like, I put it. I just put a mic in the middle of like a coffee table like this, and we like sat there and talked for like two hours. All of you over the mic. <laughs> Dude, and I uh, and I, I go back to check the check it, like dude, the guy with the camera like was off center, and um there was wind blowing directly into the mic, so you couldn't hear like anything. No yeah. way. And dude, I mean, I was like, dude, what the fuck was this? Like, this is like a mess. Shit. You couldn't hear. You couldn't hear shit. <laughs> like, you were listening to voices over like a fan, <laughs> so like no you had to like listen closely. That's crazy. Um, yeah, so I was really fucked. So I was like, I was like, fuck that. Like, I'm not doing that shit again. That's hilarious. Yeah, but dude, oh, the question Podcasts I had though was, sure. um, so dude, you've been doing social media for so long. Like, how? Like, what is like the best and the worst changes that you've seen from the fitness industry since you started? Because it's so different. Oh it's just God, such dude, a. It's, so me- it's like bad, almost like it. Okay, I'm gonna say these things, and I, I don't. <sighs> now, nah, dude, just let it rip, bro. Okay. Yeah, just go hard. I want people to realize, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure, like. Like I like to look at things unbiasedly and I, I want to try to make sure that I don't have an ego around things. But sometimes like when you make observations about yourself and the world around you, it's kind of hard to say things without sounding biased. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So I'm just going to say my observations straight up. But basically, um, I, I love the fitness industry for so long and I feel like it's only become more open and transparent, mm-hmm. um, which is really, 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 really cool to see. And at one point I was actually, I like... I felt like I was like all the influencers when I was starting were like, like these like kind of official ish kind of like magazine type creators. Like, um, yeah. When you started, who, who was it? Cause, um, like I'm trying to pick an right. era. Cause I don't like when I found you, I, you'd already been like well into it. Yeah. So like, I don't know when exactly you started. Um, so a lot of the biggest creators that I remember when I started was like, like Jeff said, Sergi mm-hmm. Constance, uh, do you know Sergi Constance? I know the name. Yeah. But, oh, I obviously know Jeff C. He's, he's the adult god for sure, Sergi. Um, who else? Uh, like Jeremy Buendia was popping off at the time. Oh, that's yeah. when Men's Physique was coming up. Yeah. Um, it was like, yeah, back in the day of like competitors, Men's Physique competitors, and then like fitness models. So there wasn't really any like like personalities in the fitness industry, aside from like Christian Guzman yeah. and it's whoever fu- else. It's funny you say that because my favorite... Uh, fitness influences of all time were the 
are older than David Laid, and I would I I think they kind of do like similar to what I do now, but they did it even better. Like they those guys like the Hodge the Hodge twins. Oh, I love them, dude. If I met them, I'd get on my knees and start sobbing, bro. I say <laughs> straight up, like, <laughs> them, dude, they're they like. And I know they don't do that stuff anymore, but like, yeah, but it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. They still do a lot of funny videos though. I yeah. Know. Dude, I they it, talk about a lot of politics now too. Yeah. They became political. They like switched up. So, um, but dude, they're old shit, bro. Oh my God. That shit was funny, bro. Yeah. Fuck cream pie. Yeah. Like going deep, going, uh, was it? It was like, uh, leave the nuts hanging out. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I just go in and leave the nuts hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Reminds me of Timothy Delegato too. I love that yeah. guy. <laughs> like, that was so funny, yeah. dude. Yeah, dude. But yeah, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. So like, how did, how does it change? Like best and worst ways it changed. Best way I'd see is, um, I, like, I felt like I was like starting to bridge into like the whole like personality thing, which was nice because TikTok was opening and that's where I took advantage and that's how I grew. It's because right when TikTok came out, I started posting like music workout montages in the TikTok platform yeah. from the videos I took for Instagram. So that was cool. But then around that time, I think people just started posting like, it was more like, like it was less about like official fitness model, like just how like you look and it was more about like personalities which I oh, like because yeah. it was more relatable. Like it, it started to be more like kids and younger people, <laughs> like people around my age at the time. So I thought that was really dope. And then now it opened to this space where it's like, like everyone's a personality through TikTok There's, there's motherfuckers like me, bro. Like I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> it's sick as fuck though. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's my favorite thing is like you and like Baj, like just talking to the camera. And that's like, yeah, that's the way to go about it really. Yeah. I mean, it was an accident because I, I was really serious about fitness for a really long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I bolted up to like two thirty, um, and how much do you weigh right now, dude? Bro, maybe like one, one ninety five, maybe. And how much did you weigh when you were kind of fat too? I did a DEXA scan. Dude, you were not fat. No, well, I did a DEXA scan, and uh, because I stopped like working out seriously, I stopped dieting, and I just started partying and like everything like that. Um, there's goods and bads to that, but uh, yeah, dude, I lost like twenty three pounds of solid muscle muscle tissue. What? Yeah. Like over like three years. How did that? Um, how that happen? Um. So I was so I was so serious. I feel like um, it's all I cared about. I mean, like obviously, like no social life, like not not drinking, and I like wanted it like so bad for some reason. Um, and uh, I like over the span of like I bulked, 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 and I leaned out and I got down to like com- I was like competition ready, and then COVID hit. I was gonna compete, and I was like the same weight I am now with like a lot, not, not 23 pounds. Like that was 23 pounds from the bulk. Cause that was the last time I did the DEXA scan. Mm-hmm. I think I had like, uh, like out of two thirty, I think it was like, I, I, it, it like told me the amount of like weight, including like minus the fat. And I think it was like one ninety like six of like pure muscle, including and like bone and shit. I don't really, I don't really remember. But then like when I did it again, Cause like someone broke it down for me cause I didn't understand what the DEXA scan really was. Um, and they were like, dude, you have like that, that number has gone down to like 174 or something. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I don't know. What but, exactly were the lifestyle changes that, um, like uh, reduced from prior to those three years to those three years? Well, when I got to co or when I got to college, I, uh, I, uh, joined a fraternity and, um, Oh, that's the best. Yeah. But this way, here, here's the thing all is kinds of great, Gains. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, dude, you get jacked. I swear. So jacked. <laughs> um, but like, I don't know. Well, the thing is, like, the, the biggest I was, I feel like I was the least happy. You know, um, because it's like you're always. Ch- I I don't know. I I think like, uh, people like go through things, and I think it's like a a hunch of mine, and like they don't know how to deal with problems like that are exterior in their life. And the, a very clear cut way to go about salt, like changing something quickly is the gym. Like, let's say there's a bunch of problems and like, you don't know, you don't know how to fix it. And, uh, like a girl breaks up with you or something happens and you go to the gym and it's like a clear cut way to make progress in something. So it kind of fills that, but like, it's not really fixing the problem. Um, it's the best revenge though. It is a great revenge. Best dude. revenge is Holy progress shit. Of yourself. Oh, a hundred percent. It's great. And it's great. And, it, and then that can be a motivator. But I, I don't know, for me, it didn't feel like whatever I was missing um, when I was the most jacked I was. And when I got to college and I started like going out more, like meeting more friends and like enjoying life more, I guess, like 
I realized like there's like a balance, you know, like, and I think it's different for me because I don't think that applies to people who want to be like IFBB pros and stuff because that's a whole different thing. But for me, I was kind of just using it as like a, almost like a coping mechanism, maybe. I don't really know. Um, mm-hmm. And so I would, uh, and then I like got a girl and I was like, oh shit, dude, I'm chilling. Like, yeah, I was always too big. I was like, fuck, I want to like lean down a little bit, be like one of the fucking like David Lay type guys. David Lee, that guy. Yeah, what are, like, Lee, well, he's jacked. I would say he's, one just, of, he's just fucking tall, man. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a hack too, bro. Fuck, that's man. great hack. I, yeah, um, yeah, being tall. Good thing I'm taller. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. He's so tall. <laughs> do you you know what's funny is uh, dude, meeting John Skywalker in real life is crazy. John's it's, crazy. Bro. I did not know he was like six five. I was like, what the really, dude? No, bro. I I I didn't know that. Shit. I mean, I don't I didn't look into it that much, and then I saw. I was like, what the fuck. Yeah, but, uh, height is a hack, bro. If you're tall, dude. I know, man. <laughs> I'm living life on hard mode. <laughs> no, dude, you're not. You're not are that you short. Like, are you like six one? I'm six one, but yeah, I, I, w- I wouldn't be mad being like six five. You know what I'm saying? That 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 could be cool. Yeah, I wouldn't either, bro. <laughs> I wouldn't be mad being six. Uh, dude, I, dude, you're pretty like you're not short though. <laughs> And plus, you hold the muscle well. I appreciate that. It is kind of frustrating, though, especially when I was popping off on TikTok. All the comments would just be like, 5'2", five 5'2". Two, five two, oh, major. damn. They damn, all of them bro. thought I was like five foot or less. Uh, I damn. mean, I guess it's a good thing because when people, you know, meet you in person, they're like, oh, wow, you're way bigger than I thought. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's always cool. Still, something you know? about my head to body ratio just, I guess, isn't right. It just fucked it up. <laughs> I, I think it was the Goku hair, too, because the Goku hair was like three, four inches tall. Oh, so it yeah. just made the rest of my body look like four feet. Oh, uh, I mean, hey, bro, it happens. But then, then they meet you, and they're like, "Oh, you're not that short." <laughs> you know, that's so that's cool. You know, yeah. so that's a good thing. But what were you saying about your body, your physique? Uh, what you was, it, what like, was I saying? Oh, you yeah, you like, wanted to be more of like a limb, dude, slim. Yeah, I wanted to be like slim. So like, I, dude, it was so cool because like you know, like like I had like no followers on Instagram. I was I was just all I cared about was like lifting, and it was super oversaturated um, because there's a lot of people that just lifted, and it wasn't really working anymore. But I mean, I didn't, I wasn't posting to like. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like get clattering. I was just trying to hold myself accountable and then look back at Instagram pics and be like, damn, hell yeah. Yeah. Like, I think a big one was like when I was single, like if I put my uh, fitness account in my like bio of my regular one Mm -hmm. and like if I was talking to a girl at the time and she like clicked it and I'm like, like looking, looking jacked. Yeah, right. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. That was, that that was like the real purpose. Right. Uh, That's why I like every time I met somebody, I wanted to make sure I didn't, didn't give them my Instagram account. So if we ever met or they just found out in person, it was way better. Yeah, yeah. So when they find it like on their own kind of thing. Like, yeah. yeah. Just, just where the... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I remember uh, Flex, Flex Wheeler commented on one of my really old videos back when I was like super jacked. He was like, looking good, buddy. And I was like, holy. Damn. I was like, Dude, holy fuck. Holy shit. It's like, crazy. Holy it's fucking Flex. I told all my friends, I was like, holy dude look at that, that was crazy. yeah dude and then he commented on my art account i would like draw too and he was like hey man this drawing is also really good whoa yeah that's dope yeah i was like damn that's a really cool little uh interaction there um what was i saying i, I forgot what i was saying but like uh your physique and oh how, like, yeah yeah so then then i got then i got happy and then i'd like kind of just wanted to look like okay you know yeah. like i just want I, like i think like a balance really helped me like finding mm-hmm. a balance um yeah dude yeah, I fully get that. I think for me, I I really understand that because I want to be on the Olympia stage so bad. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if this is going to sound kind of confusing to some people, but I do not, I do not want that body. Yeah, I, I, I told bro, I'm really, really tired of bulking right now. I'm tired of being big. And I look back at like videos of me where I was like lean and like, I don't care how cringe this is going to sound, but it's kind of like that, like, TikTok like e boy look or something where you're just you're just slim and aesthetic. Yeah, that's what that's, I want, bro. That's what I that's what I used to be, right? Yeah, I yeah. would just try to stay shredded, and that was my look, and I preferred that, and I still love that. That's like what makes me happy. But I'm literally just I've been so obsessed with Olympia, and I'm literally doing that simply for the pursuit of sport and greatness. Yeah, like I just want to be Mr. Olympia simply because of the sport. Yeah, but it's, it's like it's such like a conflict of interest for me because. I don't like fucking walking around like that, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'd just, rather just be like lean, you know. Yeah, no, makes me feel happy. Yeah, that'd, that'd be cool. It's like it's like uh, you finally get there and you're like, damn it, what cost, bro? What like cost? the girls don't want me anymore. The girls don't want me anymore. It's just the old judges, dude. <laughs> oh, dude, it's just the judges. They're the only ones. But fuck, I got the trophy. Fuck it. I I think the Olympia is so incredible to get. You know, I think like, and then at the end of the day, I feel like for you, you just gotta kind of like pick one. 
you know it's like all right what do i want you know right uh, I just and, and you want a bad yeah so mm-hmm. how's how's the bulk going it's frustrating dude what you i mean? just hate digesting so much like i just want to fall asleep all the time plus it's so hard to do podcasts when you eat that much yeah yeah so like like right now since today i've been basically doing work like this the whole day i've been just drinking protein shakes and like drinking cyclodextrin because i just i have to be able to focus oh damn so all, most of my calories today has has all been just drink yeah but um damn that's on a normal day like we just do like a chill one where you don't have to focus too hard you know <laughs> show podcast just fucking that's vibe. called sleeping oh, shit. yeah yeah <laughs> like a nap podcast yeah. where it's just sleeping. <laughs> On a normal day, though, yeah, I eat all that rice and stuff, and I just want to go to sleep. It's hard for me to focus and do work. And, like, you know, there's so many things you and I want to do, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like we want to continue making our content as much as possible. We want to vlog our journey on YouTube as well and edit it, which takes fucking forever. We want to start up our businesses, which literally takes all our focus, but we're also doing content in, like, three different platforms at the exact same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I've actually been, yeah, know, dude, I've been so struggling with that on. shit a lot recently, um, mainly because of school, um, so, and you have school dude and if i didn't choose architecture i would be chilling i think uh that's not true but i would be chilling more than i am now um why do you say that because architecture is hard as <laughs> and, and and it's not hard it's time consuming it's not like a di- it, like, because engineering is like difficult math um architecture is just t- like unavoidable time consumption whereas like if they want me to do like three plan designs for a building like just draw the plans for the building like the aerial like each drawing, like no matter, even if I'm a, like a pro, it's just going to take me like two hours per drawing. So it's just the time consumption um, aspect that kind of fucks me up. And then like, it's like with my girlfriend, I feel like the, the busier I get, um, you know, it's like the, the less time I have to delegate to that. And then like, uh, you know, school and like videos. And, but, but I think the nature of my videos is a little different. Um, because it's, it's really cool coming out to meet people that like make videos. Um, because like, it feels like a lot of people have like cameramen, they edit a lot. Yeah. Uh, I kind of just like, you know, play games and then like when something hits me, I'll just like, yo. Yeah. So, That's hilarious. Yeah. And my YouTube Wait, videos, so I take on my phone. How did this all start? I think I have a general idea, but I want to hear the story. Um, so I, like I started posting fitness stuff for a while and then I was like, I, I thought the, like the hard style edits like were not for me like <laughs> the hard style. yeah like i like hard style uh that's kind of a lot i, I like dubstep um bro we can change it like, i was doing dubstep like edits yeah not everybody likes it but some people do that's my thing is like i, I made a dubstep song i tried to throw it on an edit um people liked it i think i don't really know but uh fuck what everyone else thinks <laughs> yeah i, like I fuck with it. dubstep dude um oh, i like it I, I get hard style kind of i don't really like house um you don't like house no, I, I just, I, it's kind of boring for me. I'll and convert you. I'll bring you to San Diego and you'll change your mind immediately. Are you a, are you a house guy? I'm like, an everything guy. So you like all time. I, and I, I don't, di- that's not me saying I dislike house. Like a lot of the sets we play are house sets. Oh yeah. And right. I, I enjoy, DJ. yeah, I, I enjoy house, but am I like, am I getting lit to house? Like pro- that me personally, like probably not. Um, I need to, mm. I'm like a headbanger. Like, um, and people think that's cringy as fuck, but you gotta be there. It's like one of those things where like, you know, it's sick, man. Like no, anyone I, like metal music or fucking rock? Yeah, shit, dude, like, I, I love it. It's the same it, concept, but now it's electronic of the future. Yeah, I try and explain it to my friends, and they see videos of people headbanging. They're like, dude, that is, like, I'm never doing that. But then they, I brought one of them. One of them finally folded and came, and he was like, actually, that was super fun. Like, he explained to the other guys that, that also don't like it. He was like, it's kind of fun. It's kind of like being with, like, that, like, weird group of friends. And you know they're weird, but it's really fun when you're with them. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's kind of like it's what it's culture. like. Yeah, yeah. That's like, yep. uh, but then, like, outside looking in, you're like, that's weird as fuck. But then you're doing mm-hmm. it, and you're like, this is actually fun. Um, House music is a little bit more um, societally. Um, accepted. Modernly accepted, yeah. It's, and honestly, it's more of, like, a popular thing. Oh, especially so if you go popular. to San Diego, like, a lot of the people, especially the younger people that do it, are all, like, very, very attractive, like, fun like sometimes a lot of like the fraternities and sororities like sdsu you know go to house music events so yeah pretty standard but it's still a good time yeah yeah I, I feel like a lot of people think it's like insane uh you know not funny or like something something in between i just did it because i thought it was funny like I, I feel like the the basis of it um it, well, it evolved but i guess i don't know the story is weird so i got banned like nine times um, and I think the total like follower loss was like around 2 million on TikTok. Um, so like 
How did it start, like, from you just being a kid before social media? Like, did, oh, did, did like, it have something to do with gaming? Like, my chat. Oh, yeah, for sure, dude. I, like, Xbox parties and stuff late mm-hmm. at night. Like, all that shit that, like, yeah. you, you can never, like, ever let, let get out. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah, that was, that's kind of, like, the basis of what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, shit. Just you the boys. Yeah, like, saying <laughs> the most heinous shit ever. And if someone hears it, it's, like, it's over, dude. We're fucked. Like, um, but it kind of evolved because, like, I mean, with the with the content itself, it was, like, I, um, I started, uh, yeah, I did the fitness and then for six months I was like posting on TikTok and I finally got to 20 K, um, on TikTok. Um, and I was like, holy shit, this is insane. Like, like, and then I got banned and I was, I was shattered, dude. <sighs> I was shattered. I was like, no, like, how could this happen? Like, and then like, I was like, damn, like, do I just quit now? Like, what, like, like, is it over? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. um, and it took me a year to get to 2 K on Instagram and I was so happy. And like me and my friends, like. I remember I hit 2K and then like we fucking boozed. We were like, oh, hell yeah, man. Oh, that's bad, awesome. Dude. Yeah, dude, they're so happy. Dude, my boys are so supportive. Like, and like, I mean, anything any of us do, it's like, um, just support them to the end, man. Um, yeah. But yeah, we got fucking blackout. Like, dude, we party. Dude, we threw like a huge, like a, uh, like pool hopping party. Not for that, but it was like part of it. Um, and like, we like broke into like a pool and mm-hmm. like there was a bunch of girls and people with us and we just wanted to throw a party in general. But like, then we were like, oh, 2K also. Mm-hmm. Um, so then, all right. So then I, uh, I started another account, um, over another six to eight months of like posting every day or maybe less, uh, I got banned again mm-hmm. and I was like, how could like, no, not again. And then I did it again. And this time I got to like 98 K and I got banned again. Um, just cause of the content of the videos. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this point I was like, all right, dude, like, what am I doing? This is, ri- this is ridiculous. Uh, <clears throat> and then I was like, dude, you know what it is? Like, I don't have a catchy name. Like, uh, like there was like Sush and like Killjoy and like Lean Beef Patty yeah, like, and Trent Twins. And I was like, oh, everyone's got a cool name. Like, I don't mm, have a cool, cool name. Handle. I was like LRL Fitness. Like, that's not that cool. What was L? It was LRL Fitness. Well, did not you, my digital footprints fuck. Did you not want to say it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Oh, no, but it's, it was like, uh, and then so I was like, okay. Like, and then I saw this TikTok. I think it was like a random gay dude. And he was like, when you were like, I don't see. I'm not like I'm not on gay talk, you know. But mm. I, I remember, and this dude was like, "Yeah, dude, I don't know. I was walking past the uh, the attendance desk at a hotel, and this guy just called me horse meat." <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, what the fuck?" And it was like this gay dude. And I was like, "Oh, that's kind of funny. Like, I'm just gonna call myself horse meat now." Yeah. Um, and so then I did it again, and I got to. I finally got past 100k. It'd been like two and a half years at this point. That's hilarious. Uh, and then like I. Uh, I got banned again. I think I was at 150 and then I got to like 250. I got banned again. And then I got to 400, got banned again. And I was so, uh, at this point, I'm so used to it. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, like I don't, oh, it's like another band and then I just start another account. Yeah. And um, I, I believe that like, I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. Like if my vids are good, then it'll come back. And if they suck, then I can die mm-hmm. here and I didn't deserve it anyway. And people will find you. Well, yeah. Well, I was like, dude, if they, if they don't, that means my videos now and uh, I deserve to, you know, fail. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then I got to 500 K on horse meat fitness and that's how the fitness tip started. Um, and it basically, ev- the way it evolved was like, uh, in the beginning, like I, I like did the fitness and then I, I d- and then I talked, I just yapped about random nonsense. And then I, uh, and then I just started saying out of pocket. Sh- and Wait, then, like you were doing fitness at the same time? Uh, kind of like, like you were saying things while you were doing curls. No, I was just kind of like flexing and saying weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it was, it was oh, like, yeah yeah straighter thing yeah it was, yeah it was uh and then um ah oh, dude i'm like losing track of thought it's caffeine bro um and then i and then i was like all right like i'm obviously talking about nonsense like mm-hmm. yap like i'm just i don't even know what i'm saying like and like half these they're so long and then um oh, what happened after that uh oh yeah yeah i started just like saying jokes or not jo- they're not even jokes they're just that I thought about like from discord the night before. And then I went down this weird path and it wasn't even fitness anymore. So then I was like, how do I bring it back? And then I just threw fitness tips on it and then would just say whatever, but just like had the caption fitness tips. No way. <laughs> yeah. And so like, I was like, Oh, well like I'm not doing fitness right now, but if I just say that it's fitness tips and then just talk about something completely different, then it kind of counts. <laughs> that's yeah. Great. Yeah. So, and then that's kind of how it evolved. But, and so now you have, so, oh yeah, after the last, the f- horse meat fitness got banned, I was like, dude, 
I'm I'm just gonna start five accounts on TikTok, uh, and then grow them evenly, and then like now I now I don't really post on TikTok anymore. Wait, why not? Uh, I don't I don't know. I just like. Why don't you just repost your IGs to TikTok? Um. Yeah, well, it kind of works the opposite way. Like, I'll, I'll make it on, like, TikTok, and I'll save it as a draft, and then I'll just post on Instagram. I don't know why. I just, like, TikTok, um, I don't know. I, I just, like, I don't know. Just don't post there. Did it hurt you too much? Yeah, I, I just, like, I don't really like the app anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> I would do, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I yeah, would dude. I'm, like, so I'm like, I'm, I'm, I don't really want to use this app anymore. So, like, <laughs> I, I don't even care if, like, people, like, only know me from, like, TikTok and then never see me again and then like oh like what fuck happened to this guy yeah uh it's just like yeah i fucked that up lucky that's hilarious yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so but yeah that's pretty much like the the way it kind of happened gotcha and then now you're focusing on your vlogs on youtube right um yeah like i tried to do it over the summer and then um i kind of fell off and then mm -hmm. i like i just stopped doing it um when i got to school but now like i, I enjoy doing it um, I kind I kind of just like making content because I like to like I like yeah. to, and uh, hopefully other people like it too, kind right. of thing. Um, what do you feel like you're most passionate about right now? Uh, that's a hard question. I think like you, YouTube and Twitch and DJing mainly. Like I really like trying to make music. I'm not very good yet you or said anything. YouTube, Twitch. I like to stream VR okay. chat. Just like fuck with weird people. Yeah. There's like some crazy shit going on with that. Like, um, have you ever tried a VR headset? No. Well, uh, not really. I don't yeah. know. So, like, for long distance relationships, I don't know. Am I allowed to say like, uh, like Dolo on here? Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's like, all right. So like, you're in VR, and mm -hmm. like, there's special avatars with like dicks and vaginas that like, it the dick magnetizes to the vagina, and like people fuck, right? Okay. In VR, <laughs> and so they have these like, dildos and pocket pussies that sync to your game, so that like while you have the headset on um let's say like girl a girl puts it the dildo in yeah. and you put the pocket pussy on okay, every time yeah. you thrust it like it vibrates does it for her yeah 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 so that's insane um and then there's these full body touch suits where like when you touch you can feel touch and Whoa. Every, yeah yeah so um and like at full body tracking and everything so i didn't know about a lot of this and so I started playing VR and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And it's you started of, having VR. I started playing it on stream just to see what's up. And it's really sad kind of, cause there's like VR bars and people will drink in real life and go to these VR bars like on the weekends. They will drink in real life. Yeah. So they'll be in their bedroom with like a oh, bottle of and vodka and, and then drink the bars. and then put their headset on and they're in the oh, virtual shit. reality bar and it's proximity chat. So then they'll hang out in this virtual reality. <sighs> Yeah, it's kind of like sad because I remember I went up to her. I was like, "Hey, like, well, like," and I was trying to interview people. She's like, "It's my twenty fourth birthday." Oh. Yeah, and she's like, "Yeah," and I'm just hanging out. And she was drunk. You could like tell by the mic. She was like slurring. She's like, "I'm drinking all night." You were like, talking to her in the VR. Yeah. So there's a there's a mic and it's proximity chat. So I'm looking at. But when you when you have the VR, it's like you're actually there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at her and I'm like, uh, and she's like, "Yeah, I've been taking shots all night. Like, take a shot with me." And then she like took her headset off, took another shot. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of like what VR is. There's also, um, what, like, was v she with any friends or anything or, uh, yeah, but they were random people and they were just they celebrating her birthday with her. Wow. Kind of sad. That's crazy. Yeah. That kind of reminds me to be honest of, um, it's a little bit sad, but I mean, the world is definitely going to go that way and it's insane, but maybe it does give opportunity in a way. Cause there is like, sometimes you just can't do anything about it. You know, like yeah. you can't control the, the situation that some people are in. But when I was a kid, told the story a bunch but basically my parents were extremely strict i was an only child they made they wanted me to be like the perfect asian boy like fucking seven instruments like seven seven sports eagle scout all that shit. so they put parental controls on my computer at all times of the day so i got i could never access it unless i needed to do homework so one day i put my uh i put like a it was like a recorder like a camera recorder or something in the corner of the room mm -hmm. um behind the uh, on top of like the cabinet behind like a book shot it down to the computer Asked my mom to unlock the, the computer so I could do homework, right? Later down that later that night, I checked the camera, played a little game of hangman, checked out her fingers and found out the password was our street address. Dude, that's insane, bro. That's like so, high level shit, dude. So I would figure out when she went to sleep and it was about 2 a.m. every night. So mm -hmm. at that time, I would 
set an alarm for myself for about 2.30 after she finished eating her Cheetos and watching TV and went to sleep. And I would sneak to the office room, unlock it, and play RuneScape and watch anime so I could talk to people online because I wasn't allowed to see friends. But that's awesome. And I, I think in a lot of situations, like, uh, it's it's like that. But that's super cool, actually. You, like, you wanted it, bro. You dug deep. Like, it's grit, you Yeah, know? but if I was in a VR, I would be, I'd be in the bar fucking oh, slinging... It's like, VR yeah. poon, well, bro. No, literally, literally there's <laughs> like there's like orgies and stuff, and um, there's like apparently whole VR relationships where people then cheat in VR as well. Whoa. Yeah. So there's so they meet in VR, they date for years in VR, and then they like cheat in VR. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a whole thing. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, and then and then I, I was asking another group is like people just don't like rules, do they? Yeah. Was, I was like, is it gay? Um. If like you're you're having VR sex and um the guy the person you're having sex with is a dude in real life but it's a girl avatar and that happens a lot and yeah. he's like no it's not gay it's VR bro and I'm like dude no that's gay shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you think it's gay shit yeah dude of course bro ah because you, there's you can hear the moans and shit. like uh so they'll be in their mic like oh yeah oh oh uh. Yeah, yeah, no, dude, it's bad. You sh- the streams are bad, bro. I'm probably getting banned. I'm probably gonna go home. And it's banned. Like, th- it's it's horrible. And uh, yeah, and I got and there's VR strip clubs where the, the strippers are actual people in the room with full body tracking, and they'll like give you lap dances. And they get paid. Re- they get paid real money. And there's like a whole like uh, like almost prostitution thing in VR mm-hmm. where you you like contact these girls, you send them money, and in VR they'll like VR dominate you. Yeah. It's like, I've been going down this rabbit hole and that's been kind of fun for me. I mean, it's fucked up, but like, it's also kind of like intriguing mm-hmm. to like kind of learn about it. Um, kind of sad also, but, uh, you've been doing some VR stuff behind the scenes. No, dude. Well, I, I've been streaming all of it. So like my girl, um, like doesn't think I'm like out there getting, <laughs> uh, I'm getting e sucked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she comes in my room and I'm just like, I got the thing on. I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> you know, like I don't want that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's been fun, kind of. Damn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a weird tangent of like the stream. Yeah, that's a. Uh, yeah. I mean, when I was uh when I was in RuneScape, my first girlfriend was this um, person named Colin Eight One Eight. I remember her cheating on me because one day I went to um what was it? I think Varric Vill- Village or something, and I just saw her dot in the map, and it was like walking in the circle. I'm like, why does it, why does it look like you're doing that? And I went over. And I saw she was dancing with another guy. Was was he like a higher level? You, you know, yes. Oh. You know, you know where where you can like follow each other and then yeah. you just follow each other in the circle. She was doing it. Oh, and he was like a higher level. He had like better gear and shit. Yeah. Oh, dude. Her. Oh. And now that I realize, like looking back at it, Colin eight one eight was probably a dude. But probably, yeah. Fuck you, Colin. <laughs> Colin, <laughs> damn, dude. Yeah, bro. What's your what's your worst heartbreak? My worst heartbreak. Yeah. Okay, this is a. I don't know if we, I don't know if we have time to go there right now. <laughs> oh, What's shit. your worst heartbreak? Oh, uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, dude, how long have we been doing this? Has it been a while? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny because like I always prepare questions for yeah. people just in case. You and I have been through zero of the questions. Dude, I've, I'm the sorry, time, by the way. I no, bet there's be some sorry. heinous fucking questions on there. Like Oh, on the Q&A. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't even talking about the Q&A. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't look yeah, at it, probably. I mean, my own questions, and then the Q&A is even better. Oh, dude. I've scanned through it, and it's fantastic. Oh, shit. It's probably, it's like, long. It's probably like... Oh, is it? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, okay. We'll yeah. do it here soon. Yeah. But um, I kind of want to hear your... I, I my, just wanted to hear a little bit more of your story and like, oh, the breakup stuff, too. But oh, my worst? Mine, yeah, what's yours? Um... Oh, I don't know, dude. I'm like, it's, it's kind of fucked up in that like I did like fucked up shit because of it because I was like young and I like didn't know like how to handle emotions. Shit, so I think that's all of us though. Yeah, I did some fucked up shit. Like, ah, dude, I tell people this and they look at me different. They're like, you're fucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't uh, have to, you don't fuck, have to say it. it. Uh, or you don't have to say the whole thing. You well, this girl, it. that girl, the Asuna girl. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was like a freshman in high school. And she shattered my heart. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Um, How? She was just like, um, she was like, yeah, like, I, I don't, I don't like you anymore. And I was like, oh. And she was like. Just out of nowhere. Just, I don't like you anymore. Yeah. yeah uh, I don't see like, she it was kind of like, uh, I mean, I was so young, dude. I mean, I don't even count it anymore, but she was kind of like, uh, yeah, like you don't make me happy. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, 
So I was really sad about it, but I was also a freshman in high school. So like, you know, like how I almost like, I don't want to invalidate my emotions, but it was like anything like that when it comes to romance, when you're young, like I feel like it's, it was just so, it's just like it's so young that it's not, just don't understand what's going on. And so she posted a picture on Instagram where she was at the beach and, uh, I was like, I like made a comment on Instagram cause I was like sad and like hurt. And I was like, this is the ugliest I've ever seen. But then I, <laughs> yeah, but then, but then I like, like texted, you commented on her post. Yeah. And then I texted oh, everyone shit. I know to like go like her post, um, or like my comment. And so like I ran my comment up Whoa. And, and like, and wait, she, what platform? Instagram. I was a kid. I don't know. Yeah. It was like my old thing. And then I feel, I feel so bad about it to this day, man. I mean, and like, well, the, it gets you, worse. You did it in person. So like, she like saw it, you know, you were like, <laughs> there's something a little bit different. I think between doing something up front and letting someone know versus doing things behind their back. I, I, I yeah. personally think. Well, no, I mean, she looks good bad, in the picture. But. Like, well, that, ah, that's kind of weird. I was young. I was like the same age, but man. anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got yeah, yeah, we're chilling. Uh, but uh, so then um, her family calls me and they're like, uh, she's burning her clothes and we're on family vacation because like she's so upset. She feels like you're like destroying. I don't know. You're like ruining her life. And I was like, fuck you, bitch. Like, uh, like her friends started calling me and I was like, I, I like doubled down. I don't even know why. I was in like defense mode. Mm-hmm. And her friends were like, she's she's burning her clothes on the family vacation. She put them in a pile and like lit them on fire. Why was she doing that? Because... I don't know. I think she was depressed also. And I think I made it worse. Oh, was it probably related to something else? Uh, Probably or just like mental illness. And I probably just like made it 10 times worse by doing that. Uh, At the time, like maybe. I don't really know. Um, And so. How old were you guys? Like 15, 16. Very young. Yeah. Yeah. And so then her friends call me and then I was like doubling down. Like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. I feel like that. And then her mom called me and was like, how dare you do this? Like, why are you, why are you doing this? And then I was like, oh, fuck, what do I do? And then I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to triple down. I was like, fuck you, bitch. Like, Whoa, to her mom? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you're an old woman and I'm like a 15-year-old kid. Fuck you. And what? Yeah, dude. I just did. I didn't know, bro. I was in like defense mode. I was like, oh, fuck it. Like, I'm, I got to go all the way now. Like, and then I just That's sat crazy. there and I was like, damn. But then I, I feel like I did it because, and then uh, there was some other complications after that with that girl like i think that like spiraled into other things and i feel like i was responsible and like a lot a lot later i like apologized for everything and i think it was because uh um and i think like she dealt with a lot of stuff after that and i think that was like a like a huge like thing that was like my fault but uh yeah i was like i'm sorry like i had like i was just hurt and i didn't know like how to handle it Mm -hmm. i just got like mean right and so now I try to be nice to people, you know. No, I try to be nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah. No, I try to be there's nice. like, there's like a lot more fucked up stories like that. Like throughout those years, ah, like I, I can't. Ah, I don't. I, I don't really want to talk about them. Like a lot worse than that, but not things that weren't really my fault. Um, you don't have to if you don't. Yeah, feel they're 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 pretty bad. Um, basically, do you feel like um, you lashed out that way because? You felt like there was a lack of empathy and how she just ended your relationship? Uh, maybe, maybe. I, I would say one that was worse than that was like uh, like a pregnancy scare type thing mm-hmm. later down the line in high school uh, with a different girl. So, ah, fuck, I don't know if they'll see this. It's probably chilling. Um, so her dad had like stage four cancer at the time. Oh, wow. And he was like, he had like a couple months, I think. And, you know, when, I, when you first have sex, you're like, ah, oh, shit, like, let's go. Like, I'm trying to fuck. Um, and, uh, but condoms, bro, they're so expensive. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like $7 for like three, Mm -hmm. which is kind of like outrageous in my opinion. Um, but, uh, I would buy the condoms, right. And I had protected sex. And then I, one day I was just like, ah, like I don't have condoms today, you know? And so I was like, ah, dude, I'll just, I'll just pull out, you know? And, uh, that's like famous last words for a lot of people, but like, I like half pulled out you know um and so she didn't get her period for like a month and then another like two three weeks go by and i'm like oh my god like i'm burnt dude it's over like this is it for me and the worst part about it was like i I kept thinking like dude the last thing her fucking dad might hear is that some dude got her daughter his daughter pregnant and i was like yo that's should i join the military should i like 
<laughs> like, dude, it, it sounds fucked up, but I was kind of like, I was kind of like, dude, so damn, if, if this happened, like, I don't have any money. Like if, if I just join the military and I go to the front lines and like, I just send the money back, you know, I, I didn't know how to like, and then if I die, then like, I don't know, like, shit, like then if I died in the front lines of like fucking Afghanistan, then it's like, it's fucked up, but it was almost like, oh, but like the stress I'm feeling right now is like not something I have to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> it just fucked up. <laughs> but like if I live, then I can just send the money back. <laughs> oh <my laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and then, uh, finally she had like a, a super, super like heavy, something happened and we looked into it later and it's like a super, super early onset miscarriage like a super duper early one Whoa. or something like that something along those lines so where it, she, do, it doesn't work for sure pregnant and then uh, i'm not like it was something like that like I, I don't really know but and then i was like oh fuck like whew. That, was, Damn. that was a close one which is i don't think she was pregnant though I, i'm not her in her stomach no no i and then <laughs> no dude it, this sounds so fucked i like ah oh, man and i say things in a joking way that like makes it sound like like I'm joking about it, but like, nah, she was fucked. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, like it was like, damn, yeah, wow, that was a close one. And then my, and then it happened like three of my friends after me, and I was like, oh, bro, dude, I remember that those days, like when I was like, you can't sleep at night, dude. You're just like, have you like, have you ever had a pregnancy scare? I've had some crazy stories, dude. <laughs> um, I haven't talked about them before. Uh. I've had a couple of things happen. Um, and uh, probably the craziest one is that there was this girl that I was talking to that I was really, really close to. And we ended up having a, a falling out. And um, I told her that we couldn't see each other anymore just for the sake of her mental health and her safety because there was some crazy stuff going on. Um, and then like like a week later, like a couple weeks later, she ended up getting pregnant. And all my friends were like, watch out, it's going to be Asian. And I'm like, hell no, I take steroids. There's no chance. And then... Um, Later found out that she uh, got pregnant with one of our friends in her friend group and stuff. And so now there's someone oh, else have a baby. Oh, shit. Damn. Yeah, so. Were you like stressing out a little bit? Or were you just ready to... Uh, I was I was not stressed out because I was confident it was mine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you ever been confident? You're like, maybe? Well, like, well, well, with a pregnancy you, scare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have in the past, like with an ex. Yeah. But yeah. to be honest, I like... Man, I hope my parents don't listen to this either. Dude, I, I hope so too. Like, I there's, really there's hope so. so many people I don't want to watch this, dude. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna put a disclaimer at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> dude, this is bad. Oh man. Uh, all right, we're just gonna send it. Yeah, dude. Honestly, was it like a weak pullout thing? No, I got a great pull-up game. I got a great pull-out game. So dude. you just were just like let it rip. I was lonely when I was a, a teenager, so I got a lot of um, a lot of experience. But pulling out, I feel like when you're being, oh, do you have like one of the, the pocket pussy things? No, no. Like I've got like a lot of experience of like just being able to like hold it in and like. Oh, like honestly, edging? Like, no, not, not edging really. Like I think I just, uh, I don't really know what it is, man. To be honest, like I lasted a long time. I think I just, uh, when I was younger, um, I think I was just uh, displacing all my stress and stuff on like when I finally like became of age and I was like a teenager and like went going through puberty and like couldn't see other people. I think I was just honestly, I think I desensitized myself a little bit. Yeah. So then honestly, it's easy for me not to like, like break early. Yeah. And because of that too, it's just been really easy for me to pull out. And then honestly being on gear also affects your sperm oh, and, and your yeah. ejaculation. I, I'm on HCG regularly. So my balls stay plump and everything so that brings it back but honestly it does even help even more to just not get someone pregnant so well, that's, i've never really had any issues because of it yeah that's pretty good yeah <laughs> don't take steroids just because you don't get people pregnant yeah no that's not it's, a, a, it's like a, what is it like like chemical castration but also making you jacked but also making you jacked <laughs> yeah yeah like, what does it sound like the best of both worlds yeah kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, i don't know shit uh, unless you want kids and then you can't start a family, then it's like heartbreaking. But other than that, yeah, that's my biggest stressor, yeah. honestly, because I want a family so bad. I feel like if Sebum did it though, anyone can do it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of guys that have been on gear and hardcore bodybuilders that all had children and people are like, look at that. Like yeah. all included multiple, multiple children, you know, a lot of these guys. So I'm not too worried, 
but I do. I am making a conscious effort to make sure that I like probably freeze my sperm. I was going to um, say to you, yeah. And um, also continue HCG throughout my entire use for probably the entire time. Yeah. So. Damn. This, yeah. this fucking conversation is taking some crazy. I don't even remember like anything we said because it's just been so crazy. I'm like in a daze, <laughs> you know. Um, That's why I told you guys yesterday, don't do gear. <laughs> it's yeah. not worth it, man. Yeah. It's not. Not unless you want to be Mr. Olympia, I promise. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really need to be Mr. Olympia. I, I think it'd be cool to like, yeah, be a little more ripped though. But I don't know. I wouldn't do it. Plus, I told my mom and my girlfriend I wouldn't do it. So mm -hmm. I made a promise, and I'm gonna keep it. You know? Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Anyways, yeah. Uh. So. I mean, I just wanted to ask you a little bit more about this relationship, but I know it's a little bit well, what, confusing. Which Which relationship? Oh, that that's the just, old stuff. I mean. I think my relationship now kind of really changed. You guys my life seem the like most. you have an amazing relationship now, dude. I mean, it's it's like, um, like it's uh with Hannah. It before that, dude, I was just like so. Part of that also is like there would be no horse meat stuff without Hannah. Like I think really, why? I, I think her because I just wasn't in a great mental place, and I've been making content for so long, and it like wasn't really doing, shit, but I also wasn't really trying that hard. Um, that you know. I just wasn't like that happy. Like I, it was like a lot of those, it was like a lot of small, like daily, like failures of like, ah, dude, like this just random fucked up situations all the time. And you're just like, well, oh my God, another like, you know, like just ridiculous shit all the time. And then like, I wasn't that happy. What do you, you know? mean like ridiculous shit? Uh, I would say like, I mean like, um, I don't know, like, um, like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. I mean, like horrible, horrible, like Tinder experiences. Okay. Shit like that. Well, and not just that I'm like over like, and then like, um, all your friends are like with their girls and you're just sitting at home, I like see. eating the chips yeah. and shit and just being like, damn, bro, I'm like worthless. As shit right you're now. talking about like a lot of like heartbreaks yeah, and relationship situations. I wouldn't even say heartbreaks. I but. would say just like weird one-off, like, like failed endeavors. You know, I it's see. like you go on like these dates and that are like the girls like kind of weird and you, and you, you just have like that, like what, you know, this is like a weird situation. Yeah, yeah. And you just go through It's like, it's like almost like comedic in a way with all these just like weird, awkward situations all the time and all these like, like, um, and I was also just not very like, I wasn't as happy. I was definitely missing something. Um, and I feel like I'd, I'd grown up, um, with my family in a, uh, very, like disciplined like it was like i remember the way my dad like would teach me is i remember like a good example is when i was playing piano mm -hmm. um yeah we we're talking about <laughs> yeah if i would if i would play a song earlier the way i was kind of raised um was like if i was playing a song right um my dad would sit there with me um for nine hours until i got it right wow i would be like sobbing on this fucking piano like fucking it up for like hours on end and he's just like do it again you know do it like do that again and then you would actually spend the entire time though. yeah and mm -hmm. looking back it was like that's one of the best things he could have ever done for me and i'm sitting here sobbing and begging on this piano that fucking covered in tears and i'm like please like, I, I just can't play the i can't fucking play the song he's like no you're gonna sit here till you do it and then after hours and hours i would do it and he's like doesn't that feel better and i'm like still like sobbing on the fucking piano you know and i'm like i don't know like uh like elementary middle school and it was like that with school. Um, it was always like, uh, and like, I feel like his family, the, my Filipino side is all very high achieving, but like, uh, um, some of, but they're, they're all, some of them have like some, I don't know, personality disorders, I would say, uh, in a way, like, uh, maybe like some, I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff like that. But I mean, as I grew up, like I, I, I would like anyone, um, where am I trying to go with this? What, why, why do you feel? You were saying something about how now that you look back on your dad doing that, I guess that meant something for you or yeah, you it, it definitely gave me a uh, discipline now to where like when I do things like it's okay to like, like, oh, like I feel like failure breaks a lot of people, you know, and I, I, I like kind of accept it now as part of, the, I, I know a lot of people do that too. Like and accepting coming to terms with accepting failure as part of the process is like something is like super, if you can't do that, then it's hard to like do anything. If you can't accept failure, if you just like, you know, kind of turn away mm -hmm. when it like, even, and even if you accept failure a couple of times, if you fail a certain amount of times, then you're like, oh, fuck this, mm -hmm. you know? But I think, uh, I have like a higher tolerance for failure than, um, 
some other people like in like my school and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool, you know. Uh, I think that's one of the strongest things you can have as a human being. I think all of the greatest CEOs have overcome the most amount of failures and rejections. Um, There's this thing that I actually took from Steve Aoki where, because, you know, especially as like a podcaster, right? I have to reach out to multiple people all the time. And when I first started podcasting, bro, I can't even express to you how many rejections I got. Like Really? What? Like, Because like, it's like asking out a girl, except that I'm doing it every week. Yeah. With someone new, with some creator that I'm intimidated by or that I feel like maybe I'm not worth or my podcast is too small to like host, you know, I, I like I had that for so long. Right. Yeah. I um, mean, I've had, we've had things like this in so many different places and ways that we've done um, content and stuff, but podcasting is just an example. And Steve Aoki, who's one of the greatest collab artists of all time said that he expects 70% of what he wants to happen to never happen. Mm-hmm. Ever. Like ever. Yeah. And, Think about all the collaborations he's done and why he's so great and how many people he's worked with. So basically, if you ever want to get to that 30% of success, Mm -hmm. the 30% of things that you want to happen to happen, you have to go through the 70. Yeah. You have to go through the failures. You have to go through the rejections. Yeah. I I think being like, not okay with failing, but like knowing about it is pretty important. Um, But yeah, when I I met Hannah, I was just in a, I was happier. I was like, and it's weird because I'm also an only child. So I feel like I, I, uh, you get very used to being alone and very okay with being alone, you know? And it's weird. It was like, I was like a, I was like a man on a one man kayak. Mm -hmm. And then for the first time, and I've had girlfriends before, but it was never, never like serious, serious. And then when I met Hannah, it was like, there was like two people in the kayak, you know? (laughs) (laughs) And so like, but, and at first that was, that made me really anxious because, uh, I never experienced that before. And it was, it was like change. And anytime I have like big life change, I get really anxious. I was like, oh my God, like, this is kind of like, this is different, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I was also a lot happier and she like kind of showed me things that I, you know, didn't really see. Like I was so serious all the time and she showed me the more fun light side of things while also working hard because I feel like I was always an extreme person. It's like, I'm either only working or I'm only partying and not doing anything. Like there's, there's no in between, but um, she showed me balance. She just, and then, so like my mental was better and then my videos are better. And then like, she always supported. And I met her before, like, uh, she didn't, I, I didn't tell her I had social media for a really long time because like, I was like, she's going to see my videos and it's going to fuck this up for me. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Like, I was like, she's going to watch these and, uh, not like me anymore. And I was like really nervous. And then someone showed her, but we were already too deep. And I was like, oh, I got it. Like I made it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, these are fucking weird as shit, but like, <laughs> I still like you, you know, and oh like God. even now, like I mean, yeah. I made some, uh, I made some videos with her, and she's like, Jesus Christ, Logan, like what, like please God, like why? <laughs> you know, like, no yeah, but you know, she still supports me. But it, I mean, lately it's been hard because like, um, I feel like the busier I've gotten, and the, the more it's like kind of grown. I mean, and I'm not, I know there's people way busier than me, but um, uh, the way like. Like it, the more, the more you like with the DJing, with school, with like, um, I do horse me t-shirts now, which is kind of cool. That's like a fun thing I get to do. Um, Iron Crew, uh, which is just small, like a friend's brand that we're starting, but it still takes work. Um, and then my relationship and my parents being mad that I like randomly go to LA like now and like miss class and they're on my back about school. Like it's harder to have time for my relationship. And lately she's been really like sad because like she doesn't have as much of me anymore and she kind of like misses me in a way because like and 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 like I'm trying to like balance everything and I feel like I do need to delegate more time to my relationship mm-hmm. um and that's kind of been you know uh hard lately and it's like and I'm not mad at her you know because I she has those feelings like because she just like wants me to like be there more and Absolutely. I want to be there more but like I I'm just getting you're just so busy I'm just so and and it, it's weird because like I feel like I, I only, I, I don't want to really just succeed for myself. I want to see, succeed for my like friends and family um, because then they could be like, oh, like Logan did cool shit, you know? Mm-hmm. And then maybe like one day be able to like, um, you know, live the life I want to live with those people. But like at the same time, now that I'm getting so busy, am I losing those people? You know, it's like a weird like, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, I don't know. And it's like, no, I, it's no. been, it's been really hard and it's been a, it's been a new kind of thing that's been like coming up, um, that I'm trying to figure out how to deal with. And especially when a lot of like things 
happen at the same time, like stresses from different parts of your life come in at the same time. And then you're just kind of like, holy fuck, like all, like all these, there's all these issues. Like with my school, like I failed a class, they're putting me on probation. Like, I don't know if I should take a semester off. Like my parents like are like stressed about that. I'm fucking up the school, shit, you know, and then that I'm doing too much with social media. Cause I don't think they really fully understand the, like what could happen, but it could also fail at any time. Like it could fail tomorrow, honestly. Um, and then my relationship, you know, and then also DJing and then the brands that I'm trying to, you know, make work. Cause they're not like, they're not like big yet or anything. Like, I, I don't think I'm, I'm like a real, I'm not like the biggest creator, you know? So like, um, everything's still really small, even like my YouTube and everything's still really small. It's like in a building stage. Um, and so like, I'm just doing, I'm just trying to do all these things and I just want them to work and I'm trying my best, but like, you know, it just gets hard, you know? So yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> if you feel like any of the medications that we spoke about today may benefit you, such as BPC-157, GH acritoglog, such as tessamorelin, IGF-1, oxandrolone troche, semaglutide, then you can obtain these from Trans and HRT, and the link for that will be in the bio. If you feel like you're experiencing symptoms of low testosterone, such as depression, anxiety, lack of motivation, as well as lack of sex drive, then you can get this checked out as well by getting your blood work done at Transcend, and they will provide you expert medical analysis. Transcend HRT has worked with many professional bodybuilders and pro athletes, such as Thor Bjornsson, Phil Heath, and Jeremy Buendia. And if you feel like this podcast has any relevancy to you, I do believe that this clinic will provide of great benefit to you as well. I think that's one of the hardest things that we go through, not just as creators, but honestly as men. Um, and it's honestly a stereotype where uh, there's been divorces and in, in when men have become way too consumed with the work that they're doing to allocate quality time, you know, as their, um, their communication of love to their spouse, which is like, it's fucking hard, dude. Cause mm -hmm. as a man, you want to provide, right? Yeah. How the hell can you provide without working? That's yeah. But that's then they it. also want the time. So then you just feel like you're stripped low, yeah. like low currency, low of anything. Yeah. So, um, this is something I learned from my previous relationship because my last relationship actually ended because, uh, you were asking me about heartbreaks and mm -hmm. I've never talked about the, all the heartbreaks on my podcast. I've, I've only had, uh, I had my ex on my podcast. Yeah. I, I, saw, I saw that. That one was kind of crazy, but, um, I've been through a lot of like being cheated on like emulations of experiences with other females, whether or not we were in like official or not official relationships like a lot of girls that I really cared about or whatever I'd see or end up finding out that they were so, with somebody else. Um, and that was one of my biggest fears. And I had that fear with her. Um, so I was too scared to commit to her for the longest time. And so um, through a lot of very toxic ways of trying not to commit to her, we ended up getting in a good monogamous relationship after I decided to show her my love. But then we opened up to an open relationship to see the potential possibility of it. And it was amazing. But the reason that it didn't do so well is because she ended up leaving me for somebody else while we were still together because I ended up not spending time with her, bringing her out on special dates or sitting her, or get, going to festivals with her or events. So all the things that make your relationship exciting, I basically stopped doing because I got way too absorbed in like my content. Dude. Well, first off, I'm sorry about that, man. And I, I, I feel like it's, I'm, and it's, it's, Honestly, I'm thankful that you told me that because it feels like, like I'm in a place right now where if I don't like make certain choices, like that could happen to me. And and it's almost like, what well, and then, and then kind of like makes you think like what's what's important, like truly what's important, you know. And it's like, um, like uh, it, it, it's, I've always had this idea that like let's say you became the super richest guy ever, right? But then you have no one to share it with, you know. It's kind of like damn you know i mean uh, like at the end of the day i i, I and like us, people would disagree with me on this but like um you know i i when i think about what's important i i don't really i don't want to be like rich or anything and i don't really have i don't have a lot of money like people think i make money or something <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why dude i i literally i don't really but uh um i just feel like I, I, I don't need to be rich. I just want to do stuff that I like doing to have enough. 
and that I can have the people around me that are important to me. Um, and I think uh, I don't want to fuck that up, you know, and uh, I have a lot and, the, and it's like something's going to break. And I, I almost want to take a semester off of school. But God damn, these goddamn loans, dude. I, I'm trying to get, I see now I got to like text my fucking counselor and see if I can get a refund if I want to, you know, take a semester off or something. But, you know, and it, it, it like, and if she, like if she, uh, if something did break and she was like, Logan, like I can't do this anymore. I don't have enough of you. Like, yeah, that would like destroy me. But I can't blame her for that, you know? And I'm not, I'm not going to get mad because it's like, you know, yeah like that's how you feel and like your feelings are valid you know and like i am doing all these other things and i'm trying it and you know i don't know but yeah that's that's a struggle that is very recent because i haven't I've, i'm doing more than i ever have before because i like like doing twitch and youtube now mm -hmm. and um with the brands and now school is getting hard because i'm a senior now and i have a thesis year still my fifth thesis year so i'm just like i don't know but I don't know if like, this is a weird question, but if you could go back and change it, like, would you, would you have like my relationship with her? Well, yeah, yeah, I guess something like that. Would you, would you, if you do it over, would you, would you give her more of that time and attention? This is a deep ass question, dude. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry if I'm like laying it on you. No, no, it on me, bro. <laughs> I've, um, I've been actually asked this question before. So luckily I have an answer, but <sighs> it's a, uh, my perspective has changed slowly over the course of time, obviously, as as we heal and we grow and we detach. I can tell you right now, as who she is and who I am, it's over. Mm -hmm. And I hope the best for her. I want her to find a great man who treats her right because I know what she's been through. And I know that she can be shown, she can be shown some light. She can be shown... A really beautiful path but she's a, a woman that tends to, to need guidance from her from her masculine and from her partner um, whereas for me looking at the past though hypothetically if like considering I don't have these feelings for her but hypothetically if I was in the past at the time and I chose that I wanted to stay with her 100% I would have made the decision to choose her I would have made the decision to sacrifice some more time for her. But the, the problem is just like a lot of um, ignorant guys that girls believe guys are ignorant. Um, I didn't really realize what was going on in the time. I didn't really realize that I had not been spending enough time with her and she hadn't really been voicing it to me. And I would ask what's wrong and she would kind of communicate it, but she wouldn't tell me like, I need dates. I need time. I need right. And it's hard for women to do that. It really is because they feel like they need that in the relationship and it kind of makes them feel like the value is taken away when they feel like they have to tell you. Right. Yeah. I, Cause yeah. it's special if you don't, if they don't have to, and that's what they want to feel. They want to feel special. They have to feel special. That's what the relationship's for. Yeah. It, it almost feels like though, that's where like, that's why I always think communication is, is, is the most important aspect of a relationship and it's not close and there's nothing close. I mean, well, right. there's things, but communication, like clear, like bad communication will end so many relationships, you know, just not voicing, I guess, you know, what's wrong, mm -hmm. or, you know? Um, and yeah, man, that's, that's, yeah. But there was a lot of times where actually I, uh, she actually asked for me back a couple of times and I, I said, no, this wasn't a great idea. And me looking back now, I realized, um, um, I'm, I might be overstepping my bounds with saying these things, but I want to make sure that I keep your confidentiality. But um, I just understand that I feel like I could have really helped her go down a, a less dramatic and painful path had I stuck with her and helped like, lead her in a good direction, if that makes sense, and help be a good partner. But I feel like I feel like when our breakup happened, we kind of both were just like left in the desert and she was with another guy and I was kind of just alone figuring out whatever the fuck. And then, um, she ended up not being with him anymore. And, uh, basically long story short, <sighs> I realized what's good too late. Like my best friend that passed away before her, I was so busy with my content 
and the thing that made me break my content and stop my content, it did stop my growth. But honestly, who gives a fuck? Like the thing that stopped my growth was him having to go to the hospital because he was dying. So I think my my biggest lesson to myself and the like the biggest thing that I like to tell people is uh, just value the people that you love while while they're there. And if you feel like things are the string is starting to become thin, take a step forward, you know, just say you love them, say that you want to spend some time with them and then communicate that you're really, really stressed out. And maybe if you take this person out to this event or something and spend time with them, maybe they can let you work for the next week or go to LA for the next week or something like that. Hypothetically. Damn. Damn, bro. Well, I just, I well, first I want to say like, I appreciate you sharing that stuff with me because I feel like, um, I, I really like hearing, um, things from people that are like older and wiser than I am. And, you know, and that's also like you're very vulnerable for that. And I just want to say thank you for sharing that because I feel like I can learn a lot from that too. And I feel like a lot of people that watch, you know, your podcast can learn a lot from that kind of thing because it's one of the biggest problems I think is people not realizing um, in the moment when it's like, you know, it's always like, it's, it's like hindsight's 2020, you know, a lot of the time. Oh man, dude. But damn. I don't know what to say, bro. I'm just, like, I'm just like absorbing like you damn bro yeah man life is crazy bro but yeah hey I man mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a roller coaster dude yeah builds character i guess that's what david goggins would Bill's say character yeah i literally read david goggins book and it's like like you oh bro it's he's like it doesn't matter like slaps you in the face builds character <laughs> dude you should say like uh, i don't know i don't know man but Honestly, his perspective on him and his family is kind of cool too. It's a little bit different from my perspective, but I'm, I'm assuming that he communicates some strong things to him. He said on the most recent podcast with um, Chris Williamson on Modern Wisdom that um, he, he wants to give his absolute everything to his family. Everything. He David Goggins to, said yeah, that? Yeah, Goggins. He wants to give everything to his family, everything. But his family needs to let him do his work. They need to let him understand that he has work to do in order for him to give them everything. But uh, from the sounds of it, basically, it sounds like a communication kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm sure that like, there's times where he spends time with with his daughter, spends time with his wife, and then there's times where he's like, "Hey, I gotta I, be gone, do my runs, do my shit." Yeah, I gotta do the the hundred mile ruck, you know. So, yeah, but d dude, I I read his books when I was really young, and er, I read the first book and the second one. It's like. Uh, honestly, I think d this is a weird, like, off-topic thing, but David Goggins really helps people, like, kind of um, metabolize the things that happen to them in a way where it's, like, uh, it makes me stronger kind of thing rather than looking at it as, uh, you know, different things that happen. Kind of, like, brings you out of the victimhood mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, David Goggins is dope. Yeah, yeah, he's sick. He's dope as fuck. I was actually talking with... Um Wait, you met him? No, no, I wasn't. No, no. Oh, I was I like, holy oh, shit, no, no, no. dude. <laughs> I did have a friend that met him through FaceTime, though. Oh, that's um, crazy. Yeah, but. Uh, was he running? Was he running? <laughs> I, I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Uh, but um, what was I going to say? Uh, my friend, one of my friends and I had this conversation actually about um, victimhood because she was talking about her last, re her, her last relationship. And we were mm. saying that like victimhood is the last thing that. Uh, we want to put ourselves through when a breakup happens because then it strips us of our power and that's our power in order to make the next relationship even better and not bring that pain wound or trauma that's happened in the last relationship to the new one so like if i say oh my ex cheated on me she left me for another guy mm -hmm. it's her fault that it's over that's me playing victimhood now i have no power in my next relationship to make it better because i'm choosing not to play victim yeah i'm looking at it with the um the perspective I could have made the I could have made the relationship last. I could have made the relationship be going by yeah. by giving her more quality time, you know, yeah. giving her more of the. Uh, and you like learn the, from that and make the next one better rather than fucking up the next one based on the last one, you know. Yeah, yeah, dude. And it's funny you say that, dude. I on the plane right here, I was sobbing on the plane because I was watching this movie that it was literally about that. Um, it's called Her. It's you probably seen it. It's with Joaquin Phoenix. Um, he's like going through a divorce and he falls in love with like an AI. 
Oh, I've heard of it. And dude, by the end, like, bro, I was sobbing, dude. I was, the, I was fucking, I was so sad. Damn. I, yeah, dude. It was, dude, it's, that movie is fire, bro. You gotta watch that shit. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's literally that's what it's about. Like, he's going through a divorce. Like, it's really fucked up. Um, and then like it's it's like slightly in the future when AIs are like conscious. Um, and he like he's like talking to this AI and he's like, what the fuck? It's Scarlett Johansson's voice. So like her voice oh, yeah. sounds like really good. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so he's, like he's now he's like and he's falling in love with his AI because it, it's like learns and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um the whole thing like like he <laughs> like and the, the whole movie he's like fucked up about his last his divorce and and like it fucks up his new relationship with the computer and then and then he like realizes after that both of them like he kind of learned from the whole experience um but yeah that's sad as fuck i'm not gonna lie joaquin phoenix is also a fire actor dude he's a he's good <laughs> he's fucking good <laughs> okay let's do these q and a's mm -hmm. all right so rotisserie chicken says why is he so fucking awesome Oh, that's a nice comment. <laughs> that's cool. Thanks, rotisserie chicken. Alex Clippert asked, "Did Casca enjoy it?" Ooh. <laughs> 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 no, dude, I can make a fucked up joke right now, but like, I'm not going to. You sure? <sighs> can I? Yeah, do it. What was she wearing? No, 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 no that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh shit. No, that's satire, dude. That's satire. Satire. <laughs> Julius asks, "How did horse meat make a living? How does?" Um, uh, so I, well, I worked a bunch of jobs. Um, I worked at Hollister in high school. Um, and then I did, uh, uh, I was a waiter and then I did landscaping and now, um, I am, well, so I live at home like when I'm not at college and then when I'm at college, I split rent with four people. Uh, so I, I get code uses and I sell t-shirts and I do iron crew which is chains and bracelets. But like right now it's super small. So not a lot of people know about it, but like, I want to make it cool. And like the whole idea of iron crew is that like, I feel like a lot of brands and stuff are like really corporate and big and stuff, like especially in the fitness. And it's kind of like, like a little, like some of them can be a little money grabby, but uh, I just wanted it to be a brand. So like I brought all my friends on and like, we kind of make stuff together and like um, we're trying to, it's still like really early, but yeah. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Julian asks, last time you threw up? Uh, oh, uh, yesterday. Really? Yeah, I pulled, I pulled Trig because I was, I was like really fucked up. You you did what? I, I pulled Trig. Oh, shit. Yeah. you were really fucked up? Yeah, yeah. Did you go, oh, like drinking last night? Yeah, and, and it is because I, I did the same thing the two days prior. Yeah, and that was one of the reasons like um, my girlfriend was mad because someone took a picture while I was in the bathroom like unconscious like oh yeah and she's like like why are you that drunk and i was like i don't know like i oh, do like because i'm on a trip and like i don't have my car and like all we eat is fucking um uh fucking gummy bears uh, that's all we have in the house in gas. the airbnb <laughs> and like i'm eating like a bag of gummy bears a day and then we go drinking and i'm like not ready and then you know what the, the worst thing is actually right before i came on here i was like oh my god because we were out shopping and i was like oh my god let's get food we haven't had real food in days and I go in this burger place and um, I was like, dude, oh, fuck, dude. The burger and fries was $27 Whoa. for a burger and fries. And I'm like, what? Uh, like crazy. what? And, and I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, fuck, like, fuck, dude, I'm so hungry. Like, I, it's LA. Everything's overpriced for no reason, I assume. I, I take a bite and I realize that it's a vegetarian burger place. <laughs> it's all, it's a veggie burger, dude. And it's like the fake meat and sh And I, I was like yeah yeah that's that and then then they came here <laughs> yeah what was the restaurant called uh n i thought it was no mo but it was no moo like no i thought i just thought it was called no mo like oh, i was like, like all right that's a dumbass name but like yeah. whatever but then i look after i take a bite i look back at the sign and it says no moo and i, I just thought it was like something some random like like I, like I don't know you know how it is in la where everyone just comes up with weird names for shit that like sound like uh like trendy but it, it just means no cow or something or like with moo being a cow it's right. just like yeah, yeah it's and i'm like wow yeah and then like it was too late and then we just got the uber <laughs> i'm diseased <laughs> cardi fart asks does he have a horse meat i would say uh like because i'm i'm like half filipino and people think that filipinos have small dicks mm -hmm. but i'm like i got a good size penis 
I would say. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. good size penis. I don't know if you want to hear this one. It's a uh, someone saying something. It's not mean, but it's like. No, nah, dude, I, I love the I love uh, like, dude. I get so much hate. Do you but really? I, I, kind of, uh, I feel like you get a lot it, of love. It's, it's, it's hate in a way that's like loving. Okay, but but then there's real hate. And I, but I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. Like, yeah, they're all jokes. Know. Yeah. It just says, uh, he says nothing. Just tell him one more VR chat story. And I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude. Do it. You should no, tell me another one it. after this. Yeah. Juicy asked, uh, did you listen to Pink Friday 2 by Nicki Minaj? No. All Is right. that bad? I don't know. Should I, should I listen to it? Uh, Fabian asks, are you 100% Pinoy? No, I'm 50%. Oh, what's your other 50% again? Uh, my mom is, uh, my dad's fully, fully and my, da- my mom's uh, Swedish and Italian. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you're a hoppa. Well, that's why I got the height kind of a little bit. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Wait, how tall is your dad and your mom? My mom is 5'11 and my dad is 5'6 or 7. Whoa, let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. That. yeah. Oh, I hope I, I want a um, big, giant muscle mommy. Like, would, would six one be too tall? I hope she weighs more than me. Ooh. Those are my face. Pulls yeah. my chain. Yeah. My nipple chain. Nipple chain. <laughs> yeah, YP asks, uh, how do you say these insane things you say? How do you think of these insane things to say? I feel like they just kind of come up in conversation. You know? Like, mm-hmm. uh, when you're playing video games and stuff. Like, it's just the normal. Like, if you don't play video games, or like, I, I don't know. If you have friends that are fucked up, like, it's just pretty normal. Like it's, yeah, I don't know. Am I tripping? Not, I mean, when you're with your boy, sometimes you just say some crazy. Shit, I feel know? like we talk I, about like crazy shit though. Like yeah. when we talk about our experiences, it, it they all stem from like actual things that happened um, that like, and then you like, they kind of branch off into other things. Like, yeah, that was really fucked up, but it could have been more fucked up if this happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like at least this didn't happen. So you guys just have a really good perspective. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah this was really bad, but like could have been worse. And then you just give some horrific description of like something that's like way worse. And you're like, oh yeah, it wasn't that, which is nice. That's awesome, bro. Exactly. Yeah. That's why you're giving people a lot more beautiful of a perspective in life. And that's very important. The mind is everything. That last Freddie asks a, uh, do you believe in nofap? Also, is the Bible true in your opinion? Yeah, I'm, I'm Catholic. Um, I think, uh, like, so I actually went to Catholic school and I like studied the, I, I, and now I'm getting into religion. I said the Bible extensively and uh, for some reason, and I am Catholic. And, uh, but I also, I've kind of found myself like in a, in a, um, um, not like, I, I don't know. I'm more of like a overall message person because it's weird that my Catholic school actually taught me that a lot of things in the Bible were not meant to be taken literally. And it's more of like the overall. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I don't know, but I, mm-hmm. I try to be a nice person and stuff. Wait, what was the first part of the question? Um, do you believe in no fat? No. Um, I think it's just all mental. Like, I think if it helps you, it helps you. Um, kind of thing where it's like, if you believe it helps, it's like, then it'll help yep. you. And if not, then no, I believe in, um, trying to do no porn. And then I believe in, uh, I believe in like not you know if you don't want to if you want to have great sex with like your partner or something, oh yeah then, then, then probably no. better to blow your load a little less often yeah yeah or, or just do it with her oh yeah hundred percent hundred percent I definitely like you know you know beat off here and there <laughs> <laughs> yeah Guara Gara asks would you let a girl peg you for character development no <laughs> <laughs> there's a line would David Goggins get pegged for character development. Like, I think he would also say no. Lancey Fur asks, uh, what's your 23 and me? No way you're also Asian. Like, do you know what your percentages are? Um, Have you ever done one of those? No, no. But both my, my dad's parents are from, born in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. I think his dad actually served in World War II, like in the Philippines. Oh, cool. Like during like the, uh, I think the Japanese was like fucking up the Philippines. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, I'm pretty and sure he that's was, why we're, my, I'm uh, a little bit Japanese. Oh really? Yeah. Well, he was he was a, he was a soldier, um, and I he did I don't and he he died when I was really young, but my mom got to talk to him about it, and apparently it was super fucked up. Like he saw some, fuck- mm. and like he ended up he ended up like he was a doctor, but he ended up having like secret families and shit. so my dad has like a bunch of siblings. Oh whoa. Well, not secret, but like it was it was secret at the time, and now they're all like siblings. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. VGB asks, hello cousin, is your cousin Niall single? LMAO. Are you single? 
This is the first compliment I've ever gotten in my life. Really? Yeah, people don't like me, dude. I am fairly single. What does that mean? I don't know right now. You're just like... It's complicated. Oh, yeah. This is probably better left off. (laughs) Anyways. (laughs) You just cut that out. (laughs) Uh, Victor asks cut or uncut? Uh, Cut. Cut? Yeah, cut, bro. (laughs) Hell yeah, dude. And like, I I made a video about this. I'm like, ah, dude. uh, Like, people get mad when I like make the dick cheese joke. What about the... the dick cheese joke? Yeah, bro. Are you are you uncut? No. Okay, yeah, well like yeah, uh the 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 un the 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 uncuts, you like the whole joke is like dick cheese, you know, like dick cheese galore kind of thing. <laughs> under there. Oh, that's good. But gross. then but then they'll be like, Oh, but sensitivity and it's just yeah, this yeah, back yeah. and forth. But at the end of the day, dude, it doesn't fucking matter, you know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think I always get a little curious though. I'm always though. like, what would have, like, I wonder what it feels like if it's actually that different. I'm always curious. There's no way it's like that different. Yeah. I always wonder though, cause I, I do, I do recognize that I am a lot more, a lot less sensitive than I was when I was like 14, 15. But you I mean, so? I, I think that's obvious, you know? Well, I also like, I feel like, like um, do you, do you ever beat off or no? I mean, I try not to. Because I've heard of like bodybuilders like destroying their penises because their grip is just so powerful, Whoa. bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm dead ass. Like the nerves are like fucked up. So that's what happened. Well, dude, I and like I, like all right. So like I'm a I'm a huge huge Larry Wheels fan. Um, yeah. And I've watched all of his videos, and he said that that happened to him. Did you really? He, yeah. He 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 made a video a long time ago about how like um like his grip was so strong that it like destroyed the nerves in his penis. So he had, he, when he went to the doctor, he had to start doing it like this. When he went to the doctor, he had to start. No, like they said that if you're going to do it, like you, like he, he, he could only use like, like two fingers because his whole power was so powerful. This sounds like a one punch man thing, dude. This sounds crazy. Dude, I, I, cause I, you know him and I'm just like a, I'm just like a meat glazer for Larry. So like you <laughs> ask him, dude. I, but I swear he said that on a I'll video. I'll ask him, I'll ask him. Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. He'll probably tell me it's true. Yeah, dude. I mean, Larry. dude, if you can like bench 685, dude, yeah. you can easily destroy your dick. Larry's done some crazy things. If there's anyone that I would believe does anything, like Larry's always that crazy phenomenon, bro. Did you even see those videos of like what he was doing, like lifting weights when he was natural before yeah. he started gear at like 17? Yeah, yeah. It's he, fucking crazy, bro. I know. Even when he was on gear at 17 gear on 17 he there was that video of him doing like was it like 405 yeah it was like his first cycle you don't you don't suddenly like double your weight on your first cycle nor do you even like gain 100 pounds on your bench press in your first cycle so the fact that he's doing that much weight on his shoulder press man he wasn't doing that much less before right before his cycle well yeah and that's also that just um damn i was about to say something i forgot damn but yeah he's he's jacked as far (laughs) (laughs) yeah Zephyr asks, what's your OF? Oh, dude, I don't do OF. <laughs> dude, you know what's crazy, though, is, like, if I ever did get dick pics leaked or something, my biggest fear is that it would be, like, a bad picture of my penis. Like, I would never do OnlyFans or anything, but if someone, like, hacked, like, somehow, like, I don't know, hacked, like, my old phone and, like, leaked dick pics, I would at least hope they're, like, good ones. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. Because, like, I'd be really, I'd be even more upset if they, if, like, someone, like, hacked into my computer like drop my dick pics and it was like horrible angle, horrible lighting. Like my, I look fat as like my dick looks small as fuck, but yeah, no, I would never do. I don't do only fans or anything like that. That is, that's a big fear, bro. Like the angle of the, the picture Dude, yeah. changes everything. Cause if it does get leaked, bro, I pray to God it's the least impressive. <laughs> like that's, is that too much to ask for? Like it then, cause then maybe it can like, I don't know, be not as bad, but <laughs> if it gets leaked and it looks like like, dude, that's, that's no, that's not. All right, so I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if my podcast is going to get canceled because of this podcast. I'm not sure what disclaimers I can put in the beginning, but I got to think of a bunch. But I, uh, I'm down with just sending it. So, like, this question Jackson Hayes asks, would you have sex with a minor if it meant that every other predator in the world died? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, 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 let me think about this. No. Uh, no. Uh, 
Uh, uh, oh, dude, cut it out. <laughs> cut it. Next, next. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude. <laughs> That's a good video. I should make that video, actually. Do it, do it. Make it a TikTok. You, you can even re- re- refer to him if you want to at the end, be like Jackson Hayes. Or you could like call him one of the predators or something. Yeah. Um, Te- Teja- Tejas asks, when did you get your first girlfriend? Official girlfriend? Um, I don't know, maybe like middle school? But I remember my first kiss was seventh grade. Damn, that's young as hell. Is it? Was that like 14, 13? Uh, yeah, something like that. I was Maybe a, that's not the youngest, actually. Yeah, it's not. It's younger than me, though. Dude, I know. I remember my boy, like, I got, like I was a childhood best friend with him. And then I, I called him when I was 16. I was like, how you doing? He's like, oh, I'm good. I have a two-year-old daughter. And I was like, holy Whoa. Shit. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That brings me back to my Arkansas days. Arkansas. Are you from Arkansas? I grew up in Texas and then Arkansas for high school and then Indiana for Purdue. Dude, for what's, in, what's in Arkansas? Nothing. A lot of bare feet and banjos. Damn. That's crazy. It is kind of like the the old, old uh, you know the fraternity pages like uh, TFM and Old Row? Yeah. Like the, that's what it is, right? Old Row? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that shit. Like a bunch of frat dudes canoeing like in the University of Arkansas is kind of like what it's like. A lot of boat shoes. Damn. At least back at the time when I was there. Oh shit! Yeah, was so there was, was there ago. any Asians in Arkansas? No, not really. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. very little. A lot of people want to know how big your shaft is and if you would ever consider opening an OF. There's a lot of people. Wow, dude! See it? These aren't, dude. <laughs> motherfuckers are just gay now, dude. <laughs> like, shit you're, you're, them, you're making them, dude. <laughs> no, they're just gay now. Uh, uh, no, I wouldn't do OnlyFans. My uh, family would disown me. Um, plus, like. Yeah, dude, no, fuck that, dude. Mm-hmm. I feel, I just feel like, not saying being gay is bad, but like, if I'm just stroking on OnlyFans, dude, like, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, man, there are a lot of questions. I just realized I only went through like twenty percent. Holy crap! Um, I'm just gonna pick the good. I'm gonna pick yeah. some good ones. <laughs> yeah, I would say because there's probably a lot of shit yeah. in there that's just like what, like that. This is like <laughs> yeah. some of these though. I gotta sometimes I have to ask some of these because I'm pretty curious myself. Uh, such as um, predators. Johnny <laughs> asks, "Do you want to be something greater or have a higher goal than fitness and being a DJ?" Dude, being a DJ is a pretty high goal. That's, amazing goal. That's a huge fucking goal. such a sick goal. Dude, I, my life goal. I made it like on my one of my first YouTube videos. I was like, dude, like if me and Adrian and Adrian's the guy I DJ with, we're a deal. Um, if we played on that Lost Land stage, dude, bro, that would be insane. Like EDC, E4. That would be amazing, right? On, yeah. a, on, a, on a headliner set, which is set that, and that's like saying like, oh, I'm going to be like fucking Kanye. That's how, that's how crazy that is. Yeah. Um, and there's, dude. I'm, I think you'd absolutely make it, bro. Uh, well, I need to get better things. at making music. I mean, right now we're still beginners, so it's very mediocre. Here's the deal, bro. The fitness community brought us together for a reason, and we're both in the raving community of Big and Helen. And I'm trying to start my businesses linked to the Vroom community and like yeah. give it to a lot of the DJs I know and stuff too. So uh, we're both going to come up and then we'll be um, you know, sponsored dude. by Sam Yak, go to all the events. And also, dude, the Adrian, the, the guy I DJ with, and like, um, and we produce together, dude. He fucking loves you, dude. Wait, who's that? It's the, so we're we're a duo. It's it's uh-huh. called Husk, and uh, he fucking loves you, dude. You and Skywalker. Oh, I fucking love Adrian, dude. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, you're the sickest motherfucker. I, yeah. I haven't met him. Uh, no, so uh, he he lives in a little bit north of me, bro. So um, we and then and then we DJ mostly in New York. Nice. Yeah, yeah. that's dope. Dude, but the New York bouncers, bro. Holy, f- dude, I've never had a good experience with a New York bouncer in my life. It's as always a, it's always a, bad. Like while you're performing as a DJ, dude. Yeah, even when we're showing what? up to a venue we're getting paid to play at, it is still like a nightmare. Why, dude? We get we went there once with an energy drink, and like we we're just with our shit, and he goes like he walks up. Uh, you think there's a fucking energy drink bar? I mean, you think there's a frat house? Drop that right now. Like, go take a walk. Like, think about your, some shit and then come back. For having an energy dude, drink? Dude, we, with- we didn't even say anything. We just walked up and then, and then, dude, oh my, it was like, what the fuck? Like, this is cra- Like, bro, we're, we're playing tonight. He's like, oh, you guys are playing? You think you're DJs? Uh, this is, well, this isn't a frat house, dude. There's a fucking club. And like the, the, uh, the event we did before that was like a warehouse rave and it was super dope. This was like a lot smaller. So we we're just like, bro, like we're just trying to have fun and DJ. And then we finally get down. We get, it, it was just a nightmare, bro. Everyone just so, a lot of the bounces are really mean in New York. Make any sense. He was just like, just being out of pocket. Yeah. Like, and then, no and then the rest, like, were, the, then the rest were super mean. And then that guy started being nicer. Cause he kind of felt bad. Yeah. But then the rest were still really mean. 
Yeah. For you guys being performers. Yeah, well, we, and we were we were kind of early, so there was a bunch of DJs. It was three stories, and it was a really small gig. You know, we're just DJing in a club, but like, it was like, damn, bro, like, can we like chill? You know, that makes no sense. Yeah, were they young? I would say like, uh, no, they're yeah, yeah, they're probably like late twenties. I would, st- I mean, I would personally expect more maturity from a late twenty, but but I, I, I know that's someone told me that in New York, there's so many DJs that they have to be like that. Um, yeah, that's what, that's one of the explanations I heard. So I don't know. Hmm. Luke, uh, Luca Lee Ford asks what age and why did you get into lifting? Um, I got in when I was, uh, I, I did, I did track cross country, lacrosse and rugby towards the end. And then nice rugby. Damn dude. Well, I trained for it and then, and then just stops. <laughs> so, but I, I definitely did a while of training. And so, um, uh, I was like, and then so I got in like a altercation with my um, freshman year lacrosse coach. He threw a 2.5 plate at me in the weight room. He fucking chucked it at me because I was standing, waiting in line for the pull-up bar. Um, anyway, that coach get, like fucked the team manager the next year and got fired anyway. But like, dude, but I was like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, and he was, he was always going, he was always on me. And I was like, I was kind of small and like, but I was ripped looking back. I was like shredded. Mm-hmm. But I was like, dude, fuck. I'm like tired of being small and shit and like I just want to be jacked. Like, <laughs> like in anime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh Chudier asks, what's the most embarrassing thing you did at the gym? I dropped the uh I dropped the bar on my neck and I had to get saved by like ten people because I'd been choking for like thirty seconds. No way. Yeah, I actually yeah, I thought I was gonna die. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh like bench pressing? Yeah. I well I was close grip. I was close gripping close grip uh-huh. bench and then, and then it came down and like oh, I, I guillotined shoot. myself because it because it was close grip like there's less space yeah and like that little space in between my hands came down on my neck whoa yeah but i was like i was more embarrassed than scared yeah how how were you able to like like how were you able to stop it from actually like woof, um, your neck? i was whatever little strength i had left i was like holding it slightly gotcha. over like i was like I you see. know yeah yeah damn bro that's hard. <laughs> i've definitely put myself in that position too i started lifting in my uh, garage so i was just lifting on my barbells like my I, I convinced my parents to get me that a weight set for for my birthday because my mom would always call me fat so it's like <laughs> she was totally cool with getting me Dude. any workout equipment whatsoever that's fucked. Yeah. the only game that she, or the only like uh, I guess I got a I got a DS at some point after like getting some some sick uh, sick A's, but uh, so she got me Wii Fit because she said I, I was fat. Did your mom call you, did your mom call you fat? Yeah, all the time. Dude, my dad calls me fat. Dude, why I fasted? Your dad called you fat? No, dude. It's like I remember I was playing. It's gotta he be a still call, he still calls me fat. Actually, it's gotta be a Pinoy thing. Is he still calls you fat? You're fucking. No, yeah. He's like, well, because he saw how big and ripped I was back in the day. He's like, oh, look at you now. You're fat now. But he, <laughs> like, I, I don't take it to heart. But like, I kind of do because then I'm like, oh fuck. Like he's kind of right. Like damn. <laughs> like it, like, and I'm not fat, but in perspective of like being like prep ready, like yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh. Wing Tai asks, how did you meet? In, uh, how, did, how did we meet? Uh, I walked up to you at uh, Zoo Culture. I was like, hey, man, like, I've been watching it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The universe brought us together because we're sick yeah. cunts and we're actually long lost cousins. Yeah, we're actually related. Um, not Brian Bijard asks, what do your parents think of your content? Uh, they almost disowned me, dude. My mom, when she found out, she called me crying. Oh man. Yeah, and like it sucked because like when you make your mom cry, like it's really hard. So um she's just like, What are you doing? Like you put so much into your like education and everything and you're just throwing your life away. And then she was like, Delete everything. And I and I'm in the car sobbing. My dad's like like really upset, but my mom is actually crying. And now I'm crying and I'm like about to delete everything. And I, I think I had like uh this was a long time ago. I, I was it's still a pretty relatively small account. Um and so I was like I was like, all right, fuck, I'm going to delete it. And then I was about to delete it. And this is after like five bands, dude. Like I've been, I'm like, oh, dude. Sh- and well, this is on Instagram though. Like, uh, uh, like, and I was about to delete everything. Well, it, I guess it got big enough to the point where they found out about it, but it still wasn't that big. Um, but about to delete. I was about to delete my account on Instagram. And then I was like, I can't do it. And then I called them. I was like, nah, fuck that. Like, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I just like making like gay would you rathers. Like, I, I love it. 
I, I just I think it's so I I enjoy it. I, even if people don't think it's funny like I fucking think it's funny like yeah. I, I like come and and they're like what the fuck like what like what do you what are you saying what do you mean gay would you rather he's like what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like I, I just I need to do this <laughs> yeah, dude the one that really made my dad upset like genuinely like he couldn't sleep for days was the one where it was like uh when your girl's on her period and you gotta like drink the blood and the unfertilized egg for extra protein. <laughs> And he was, he like, he like saw that he just put his phone down and he couldn't sleep for days. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like dude, my parents are like, what, like, what have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? No, dude, my mom would like pray and be like, what, like, what did I do? Oh, like, what, I fucked up. Like, and I don't know what I'd done to deserve this. Um, but now, now they actually, uh, they, most of our issues are with school, but like now, like when people come to them, like trying to like snitch on me, like, oh, look what your son's doing. They'll defend me every time. Oh, that's They'll nice. be like, yeah, like he's. He knows the risks, like his life will, might be fucked, like, but like it's all or nothing at this point and that's what he chose to do. And like, we're going to stand by him on that. Mm. There's people that come to try to snitch on you. Oh yeah, dude. Like what, like what exactly? I don't like know because they won't tell me. Yeah. Like family friends. Oh, and, they'll just say that people are snitching. No, no, no. Like family friends or people will come up and try and be like, try and show them in a way like, oh, look what your son is doing online. Mm. You know, trying to like, as if they don't know, you know, kind of thing. Mm. Do yeah. you think it's like people's parents or something? Or? Maybe, dude. I don't know, but I'm try. I've been trying to find out for like, t- like a year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's crazy, dude. And my uncle thought I was like gay because I was making all these like gay fucking things, and <laughs> yeah. he's like, "What is he gay? Like what? Like what are these gay things he's doing?" And I'm like, <laughs> "No, I got a girl. Like I'm not gay. It's just this is the comedy now." And they're like, "Since when is comedy just being gay?" You know, and, <laughs> and it's thing? not even comedy. It's just like random shit that I find funny. And it's like, what, what's funny about just be, like you being, you fucking men off is funny now. Is that funny? That's oh. just gay. <laughs> it, yeah. I'm <laughs> like, dude, I'm not fucking men off. Like, bro, what? Oh man, it's crazy. <laughs> All right. Oh, man, dude, uh, we're out of time. Yeah. yeah. I want to ask you what your thoughts of bodybuilding. Someone asked what your thoughts on the state of bodybuilding currently. Um... I will say I, 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 I like watching it every year, but my favorite bodybuilder of all time was uh, Raymond Edmonds, 2019 Mr. Olympia. Nice. That physique is, in my opinion, the, my favorite physique of all time. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, so that's what I like. But I got yeah. one last question that I ask everybody at the end of every podcast, but if you were to die tomorrow and you had one thing you could send to the world, one message, what would that message be? Mm. Don't take everything so seriously. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's honestly perfect. <laughs> All right. Where can everybody find right. you? Um, my Instagram. I have two Instagrams. Uh, they're always us, like usually shadow band or um, actually band. Um, so like a lot of times you can't find it unless you type the whole thing in. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, horsemeat1, M-E-E-T, and then horsemeat2. And um, I have a bunch of TikTok accounts that start with horsemeat. If you just look it up, there's like a bunch of them. And my YouTube is Horsemeat19, and my Twitch is Horsemeat. <laughs> so, many di- <laughs> so many different Horsemeats. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, bro. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Dude, there's thank actually you for like, having me, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. There's so much I wanted to ask you. Um, I actually really wanted to talk about your story and like your come up, and I wanted to ask you about your parents and your family because I know I related to it and stuff, and ask you about like your dad and the piano lesson. But for some reason, it just fucking all flew away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, just, just, yeah. So we're gonna have to run this back again another time. Dude, that'd be dope, but, man. Hopefully, bro. And thanks for having me, man. Like honestly, I was super nervous. I've never done a podcast before, and dude, and like you're someone I looked up to, and it's just I'm just super excited to be here, man. Damn, thanks, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate lot. it, man. Well, same, dude. Same. Yeah. I'm honored to do the podcast with you. So, Yeah, dude. Thanks, guys, for watching. If you guys want to support the podcast, as you know, the best non-cost way is to uh, support us by rating us five-star on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you find a podcast, and then also subscribing to the YouTube channel and hel- hitting that bell button because you know it helps us hella. Otherwise, you never really get to see it, and it you know, doesn't help. So, um, and then also if you guys want to support us too, there's young Lake Nile and then, um, retaliation and yeah, retaliation, else. iron crew code horse me. And then I actually have horse me shirts, but they sold out. So I'll make nice. more. Yeah. yeah nice. I'll make more. That's about it. So love you guys again, horse meat, my boy. Cause, and then, um, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace. <laughs>